Max, I'm not feeling too good today. Yeah, you got the Spanish flu. Yeah, as soon as I finished recording with you, Davey Mana and Manny G, I started feeling weird. And then uh, I was just up all night tossing and turning. But uh, I took some meds this morning. Feel a little bit better. But we have a podcast to record. And we have to finish it off. That's right. Our guests this week are Davey Bada and Matty G. Max had a good time geeking out with them. And uh, we're going to geek out also RC News and all that good stuff. But before we do that, we have to find that intro and drop it. And I'm never prepared for this stuff. Never, ever, 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 ever. <laughs> Welcome to the No Name RC Podcast. Get ready for some serious bench racing. But be warned, we speak our minds, express our thoughts, and sometimes things can get a little rowdy. Hate, and he just was influenced by the hate coming from the left, the hate coming from the right. And let's get back to more club racing and less of this grabbing places. Hard to be arrogant when you're always right. See what I mean? That's exactly why people call you (laughs) arrogant, Max. You may not agree with everything we say, but it's definitely worth a listen. And our pick, can you stop whatever you're doing? Join your host, Leslie the Great, with co-host and guest as they get together (laughs) to chat our scene. Hey, after that race that I watched this morning, I have to talk about it. There we go. Hundred bucks right here, hundred dollar throw. Oh no! <laughs> I like this. Yes, 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 indeed. Nitro's the glory, but E Buggy pays the bills. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode number 275 of the No Name RC podcast. I'm your host, Keenan White, a.k.a. Left of the Great. Over to my virtual left is the great one, the arrogant one, the professor of everything, Maximus Mortimus. It's a a Friday we're recording this. Uh, We've been recording podcasts in various parts lately. We find that two hours is like our limit. So uh, we recorded yesterday with Davey Bada and Matty G. We uh, Max was geeking out on stock, and we talked to Matty G about what he's doing. David Mata obviously coming off that big win this past weekend at the Desert Classic, so we talked to him a bit. Uh, so, yeah, thank you for their time. We greatly appreciate it. Max, good day to you. Thank you for all of your time and your extensive notes that you have put in her. <laughs> like, extensive notes. I love them. I love them. Yeah, I think I think I've gotten better at it. I think we figured out the whole new, you know, system to gather info and stuff. But we are kind of having the issue of now we have too much info, you know, too much shit to put on the notes. I have to, I have to take stuff out sometimes. You have to, or else we'll be we be doing eight hour podcasts, which we've come close to. I think what is it, six hours? Yeah, That's longest not- was like between six and seven. So. That's that's just fucking stupid. That's just stupid. That's just stupid. Um, we're idiots. We're idiots. All right. Uh, before, well, uh, uh, let us get cra- uh, moving along. We want to say thank you to all of the NNRC squad around the world. We greatly appreciate you guys for listening to the Seven Hour Podcast. We greatly appreciate that. We can't do it without you guys' support. Uh, thank you to the NNRC patrons as well as the YouTube members. You guys go the extra mile. We appreciate it. If you wish to uh, support the podcast, uh, enough financial way you can via patreon and the youtube membership links for that in the written description of this podcast big shout out to all these companies that support us uh we can't do it without them remember showing these companies some love show us the podcast some love we do have links in the written description with some affiliate links some coupon codes where you can save some money and just links to the company if you do buy something from them just say in the notes hey we heard about this on the no name rc podcast they are invisible speed high tech rc corsa tech usa Sidewinder Fuel, Mayako, Beach RC, Techno RC, Clinic RC, Stacked RC, Racecraft USA, RC Box Club, Call RC, the Elite RC Productions team. Good luck to them at the Palmetto Classic this weekend. Florida RC Championships, RC Body Armor, SJ Racing Builds for all your builds that you need. House of RC, 
RCGP. Shout out to our drivers, David Runfalk, Jared Tebow. Well, sorry, he's not driving no more. Robert Battier, Alexander Hackback, Matty G, Pecco, Ivan and Una Hutton, and now Mason Fuller. So thank you for all of them. You can find links for all of those in the written description of the podcast. Thank you for all those companies for their continued support. All right, Max. Uh, we do have a few shout outs. There's a lot of birthdays, but I will say a special shout a birthday to Salty Joe, my good friend, and also David Schwartz. He celebrated his birthday, Brian Compton. I have screenshots of birthdays because I don't want to miss anybody. Justin Porter, happy birthday to you. Wesley Nevis, Zach Majube, he, his birthday. Your French friend, Ryan Gibson, Justin Stein, Magnus Sodergreen. Connor Essex, Les Crenshaw, Lane Steffi, happy birthday. Let's see who else we got here. Lee Setzer celebrated a birthday. Jason Schreer, Tom Rindekleck, Adrian Bertin, all celebrating birthdays. Very good, very good. Happy birthday to my sister-in-law. It's our birthday too. Douglas Sheffield from up in Canada, happy birthday to him. Nathan Dalby, Brandon Armitage. Chris Ryland, Ryland, Joe Pierogi, Rob Bartram, long time. I haven't spoke to him for a long time. Roberto Rivera, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Feliz Companions. BJ Bellino and Brian Compton. Well, happy birthday to everybody out there. We, we hope you guys enjoyed your day. And if you have a birthday coming up this weekend, enjoy it. Doing some RC. So happy birthday. Uh, a little bad news. I saw that uh, we saw it in our, I saw the first notice in our Discord. If you guys do want to. You know, join the discussion, join the NNRC Discord link for that in the written description. Uh, Limitless RC in Davison, Michigan, caught on fire, man. Unfortunate hobby shop caught on fire. I believe it's a track as well. Completely, yeah. completely gutted. And uh, I believe they, yeah, I was looking at the, I mean, I'm sure there is insurance for the stuff, but here's what Happy says. They're Limitless family. We are incredibly grateful that no one was injured, but it's with heavy hearts that we share that the devastating news, everything within our business has been consumed by fire. Limitless has suffered a total loss. Wow, that's so bad. So bad. A heartfelt thank you to all the brave firefighters from around the surrounding areas that put themselves in harm's way in order to battle this fire. Your selflessness and dedication are deeply appreciated. To our employers, we are like who are like our family. We express our sincere regrets. The impact on each of you is felt profoundly, and we are committed to supporting you during this time. Man, I see. I feel so bad when this happens to any type of business. Uh, we feel a little bit worse because it happens to our RC business or a track like this going out of business. That just displaces a whole bunch of people, right? That a whole bunch of people come from that place for the enjoyment. Uh, I, I believe they have a some GoFundMe or something up for these guys. I, I, somebody did send me a message. I'll go back and look through my messages and if there's anything you guys can do for Limitless RC, uh, I hope they get back on their feet and do it all over again. It's it's a big thing to catch up from that, I would say. Yeah, that's like the worst because you lose absolutely everything. It's not like you can build on something. Like You cannot use old jumps. You cannot use old parts. No, I, you have nothing. It's like everything's gone. Yeah, yeah. And pe some people said it was a lipo fire, but I don't believe it was a lipo fire. It was like something that went wrong structurally from what I've heard. Who knows? Uh, either way, once that stuff starts going up, RC stuff's flammable and plastics and and less lipos and fuel and all that stuff. Once that stuff starts going, it's like impo almost impossible to stop. You know, yeah. and everything's made out of wood inside and all the shit. Yeah, I, I, feel, I feel bad for them. Bad for him. All right, Max. Um, just quickly, what's been going on in our lives? Uh, I did it. You know what? This episode 175 was supposed to be an interview with JQ. I did interview him. I just didn't edit it this week. And I'm going to call it the Jaded JQ podcast. He's so jaded. He's like, I think the whole tire thing with Matrix was like the last nail in the coffin for him. Because uh, we did talk about that. Uh, I am going to release that next week, but I hope he snaps out of it, right? I hope he comes out of it, and right now he's just kind of jaded. He said, I'm jaded with RC right now. So, But we had a great talk. We did talk about uh, Montpellier, his trip, and uh, I think I'll release that next week. It's just a standalone podcast of uh, JQ and I. Otherwise than that, I've been looking after my, my, my kids, my dogs, and uh, just also preparing for next week's trip. 
and I fly out of her next week Thursday. This time next week I'll be in Florida. So if everything goes as planned, and then uh, Portugal and all that stuff. So, and hopefully I'm not getting sick. I really hope I'm not getting sick. I would not want to be sick the next few days. So, what about you, Max? What you been up to? Lots of schoolwork, you said. Yeah, yeah, it's been a lot because I, you know, obviously I have ongoing courses and stuff. Um, I got a few courses, you know, that I didn't do last winter, so I have to have to do a little bit extra because uh, last winter I was thinking like, yeah, no, no worries, but now, you know, uh, I. I'm doing my bachelor's, doing my school, so it's it's tough. Like I've been at school from the morning until like uh, five five p.m. every day. Um, then when I come home, I do school stuff again. But luckily, I think now uh, now I have a pretty good good uh, set for weekend. One more exam to do, and then then I'm pretty good for a while. Can to focus okay. on the podcast. Yeah, school's never gonna be easy. That's why I, d- I didn't do much of it. Um, so I guess how many more years you got left in that to do? Well, I'm I'm completing my bachelor's, but here in in uh, the Nordic countries, uh, we kind of everyone gets a master's, so still basically have two years to go. Okay, so you have all two years to go. All right, yeah. cool, cool. All right, good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. All right, I. Oh. I yeah, would not want to be going to school. What did you what, what did you see something? No, I, I was thinking because uh, this week um, uh, kind of reminded me. I, I shared again, you know, the series I made because I've been watching Ooh. a lot of those um, Hall Brothers videos, and they're really I watched good. Something this weekend too. Yeah, they're really good. I I've been watching pretty much everyone that they release nowadays. But I think you know, like obviously, I don't want to be too critical, but I think they the the thing they share. It's more so like to their, you know, they, they've tried stuff that they found out. Mm-hmm. But I'm always like, oh, like just add this and this and this. And then you got the puzzle together. So uh, I was like, then I was like, hey, I don't, I think ma- many people haven't like actually seen it because it's been so long since I made the series. And well, that, beca- that seemed to be true because people were like excited. So. Oh, yeah, Roll <laughs> like, Center yeah, series. Yeah, well, it's it's about everything. It's not only about Roll Center, it's about. Uh, all the well, not all, but a lot of the things in the car. It has like fifteen episodes. I think it's like, I'd say it's about like three, four hours the whole thing if you watch it. So, yeah, I'm I won't be doing that, Max. Sorry, I'm, yeah. I'm all glad that you made a three uh, a four hour series and and all that stuff, but I'm not watching. I did <laughs> see you post it. I saw somebody talking about that. Uh, Royal Santos don't exist. Yeah, well, that's again one of those things that I think it's it's like hard enough to try to explain what what the role center actually is, and then trying to explain that yeah, that's not actually a thing. Kind of like you know, physics. You're getting taught that oh, there's three forms of matter, and then you know when you learn more physics, you realize that oh, actually there's seven. So then you know, you know, there's not actually just solid, liquid, and gas. There's actually like fucking four more to add to those. So that's kind of the same thing with everything you learn. You think like, oh, I got it down. And then you realize that, yeah, you don't got it down. And- yeah. You know, I'm actually talking about stuff that I wrote notes about 27 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, basically that whole thing is about because the whole system is dynamic and there's mm-hmm. much more things at play than the static row center. And even if you look at the dynamic one, it's not necessarily pointing to anything worthwhile necessarily. So I think yeah. I think the guy that made that comment actually is a mountain bike suspension dude. Yeah, so I I mean he's a famous guy, he's Dave Weigel. Uh, I mm-hmm. think people who are even a little bit involved in the mountain biking scene, he's probably the most uh, known engineer in that field. He's designed probably I'd say probably like half of the world world winning bikes or something mm. like. That. He's like really good at that. We got to know. Um, a while back when um, he was running Mayako for a while and uh, we got talking in the Discord and uh, talked about some suspension stuff, which uh, he, you know, uh, taught me quite a bit of. What would he do to uh, fix suspension? Can you answer that without getting into Supreme? What's one thing he always insists on being in suspension for RC cars? 
materials was the big one like the like the the amount of uh, stiction in the mm -hmm. suspension and all that kind of uh the the overbleed of the shocks inside everything being so sloppy and whatever that that was the main one cuz yeah in 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 mountain bikes the the quality of the o-rings the quality of all the materials that's a big one they they mm -hmm. put effort to but for rc we're like so far behind so far behind got you and yeah that that was the big one that we every time we kind of started thinking about oh could this be a solution at the end of the day it was like yeah we can't really do anything because we can't rely that it it does that consistently Mm. But I see, I saw him post a video of um, Dino, a shock Dino. Yeah, yeah. I'm assuming, I'm, shock I'm assuming he's gonna he's gonna get into it. But I think he's one of those guys that when he get, get gets excited, he starts doing crazy shit. So it could be that you know he, he builds world winning bikes. That's yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, all right. I, I think I met I, I met him at uh one of these races I went to. So uh, nice man, and uh, I'm sure he's a plethora of knowledge and a super smart dude all right max i think we should just go right on to our rc news that is brought to you by invisible speed and high tech rc stop scrolling you want to be lewis hamilton learn something new with invisible speed you can't do everything at 100 percent maximum speed you have to be smooth I mean, when you drive a real car, if you drive a real car, how do, how, do you just, when you get to a 90 degree corner to t turn into the parking lot, do you go like that with the steering wheel? Do you like slam on the throttle and the brake? No, you probably turn the wheel smooth and get on the throttle smooth. Same thing with an RC car. If you want to learn more and make your speed visible, stop scrolling. Stop scrolling! And a big thank you to High Tech RC. High Tech is coming in strong and in charge in 2024 with the introduction of our new suite of new chargers. The RDX2 200, the RDX2 800, and the RDX4. Depending on your charging needs, High Tech gets you plugged in with the power, multiple port flexibility, and the ultimate reliability you require. You can go to www.hightechwhere2buy.com to find out where to purchase all your high tech stuff. Or if you did, you do buy it from somewhere. Just let them know that you heard about it on the No Name RC podcast. All right, Max. So such starts your extensive note taking. Um, <laughs> Philippine Masters announced American drivers Lutz and Pavitas. I heard Pavitas was going, so that's good. A little bit, yeah, strange, but it's good for him, I guess. Got over to yeah. I don't, I don't really know why why he's going because he they already announced he'd be going to Australia. Right. Uh, for the third round, but now he's going to Philippine Masters. So but the, I think in the announcement, they kind of wrote that Maybe Mark going would be going to. Yeah, but they are so far apart, so it's not like a one trip. But they announced in the announcement that Mark would be going to. So could it be some hot race thing? I don't know, because obviously they have, uh, as your cap says, they, they are like part of the hot race, hot race management in America. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't really know, but I mean, it's good to see for sure. I think also Sparko, maybe maybe they're going to meet up some Sparko people. Who who knows? I have no idea. I'm just spitballing here. Lots maybe of he's going for a vacation and a race. That could be too. That could be too. Why not? Yeah, I might be just that. So who knows? But for Lutz, I think he's looking to do the whole Asian Championship Series. I don't know who's paying for it, but... I trade to see. I trade to see. <laughs> Speaking of uh, drivers that are traveling, uh, Femka going on this weekend, and uh, little bumps over there racing. And uh, yeah, uh, didn't take TQ so far. As we well, watch, they as still, we this. yeah, they, they still have two rounds to go. He has two TQs, and Christian Wallhunter has two TQs. I just checked. Ooh, six TQs. rounds of qualifying. Yeah, that's that's a uh, big big event. Euros have six rounds too. I thought it was five. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's five. You're right. It's five at the like it's Yeah, it's five. All right. Well, good luck to Little Bump over there in Vietnam, his home country. All right. So this kind of came up after we finished recording, but Cavallari, yet another chassis sponsor. Uh, hey, man, I, I won Silly Season again. Like, 
<laughs> Even though I'm retired, I'm still winning, right? Didn't I did I not say that Cavalari would go to X-ray at some point? X-ray or Sparko? Well, guess what? Okay, but He's on both. Yeah, yeah. I think it's funny because I think Cavalari right now is the easiest silly season guy because you could say all the brands and he would be all the brands. He's like I think we could name him as Ketchum of uh, RC at this point because he is fucking catching them all. I have and, no idea who Ash Ash Ketchum is, but anyway, he's the he's the main character in Pokemon. Oh, uh, yep. Yeah, see, <laughs> well, yeah, I, I think but, this is the first time I've ever seen a driver have three chassis sponsors, and the <laughs> here's the killer. No, Ketchum, actually, you're wrong. You're driver. actually wrong. I know, I know one guy who has had three chassis sponsor at the same time, and it's your best friend, David Bonafog. Oh right, right, right. He had uh, Mayako, Automatics, and then he also had ARC. Yeah, but he didn't have he he didn't have a competing brand. So hey, Sp- I know, by the way, I know what you mean. Coming up with a truggy, by the way. Sparko is coming up with a truggy, by the way, right? Yeah. So hold on, he runs Sparko, E Buggy, and Nitro Buggy, Schumacher Ten Scales, and now uh, X Ray Eight Scale. See, at least David's was spread out over different genres of RC. Now yeah. this is different genres, but still offer it. But the most amazing thing of all of this is that, like, I'm surprised Schumacher even allows this with the amount of dislike between them and uh, X Ray. Well, I mean, to be honest. I think people are making this out to be more than it is. I think what it is is that someone from X-Ray America or then Ryan was like, hey, can I run your truggies? And then they were like, well, if you use our logos, you know, on your shirt. He's going to have, have, he's gonna have to have two shirts at DNC. I, it would be silly if he actually – I think what he's going to have is just going to have Spark or an X-Ray. So here's what I think. I think what we're seeing is the bricks being laid for the the plan that I had already had in mind for X-Ray anyway, which was Cavalry senior driver, eight scale, ten scale. Because it's still, I mean, we, we talked about him in this. He's still making these finals in ten scale. I have a feeling that we're going to see. Here's what I think personally: what happened? I think the Schumacher deal had to go to the end of this year, has to go to the end of this year. That's probably a decent deal. So he got Sparko to make up for the eight scale side of things. Now, I don't know if he's probably getting some money from X-Ray, but I think this is a precursor to him being on the X-Ray team full time next year. Because I just cannot understand how Schumacher allows this. I don't, I don't, because I don't see, okay, so there's two, two ways to think about it. One would be exactly what you said, that he knows he's going to leave Schumacher at the end of the year. They have Brock, you know, and they have Michael and so on and so on. Other thing would be that it's just literally that he could be, could got, be to run it, got, got to run X-Ray and then they was like, hey, you can run our cars, but would you be okay to, you know, displaying our logo? And then he was like, yes. And that's it. Like, that's all it is. It could be. But I prefer yeah. to think that it's uh it's laying the foundation fun. for a move to X ray in twenty twenty four. Yeah, sure. Sure. It, it I, I I don't see that being unlikely either. But who I who is the current management of RC America? Because this was specifically through RC America. It not, wasn't not sure, not sure, not sure. They they I've heard it's I, I'm I'm not sure who that is. Somebody who's out there can probably tell us who manages RC yeah. America. Maybe we should know this stuff. Yeah. But I think that, I think Cavalier is going to be full X-ray next year. I think that would be interesting because they are making a big push in, in um, 10 scale. And Cavalier is not a bad in on-road either. So. All I know is that even when I'm retired, I'm still winning silly season. All right. I wouldn't, like call, this, fire. I, I, I wouldn't call this a win, dude. Come on. Like it's, that's like, you know, well, I don't. I I'm not gonna even make a refer- reference because this is. You so call crazy. this a. You call this a big lipo fire, Max. So Max says, Max, you was, you were really looking for news this week. No, really, but I, I I saw this during the week, and I wanted to talk about this because apparently it was in a uh, lipo. Oh yeah, uh, that's lipo, lipo smoke. Uh, yeah, but it was like 
the whole pitch and the, this is a big issue when when the pits are at one place because that smell is awful and that's really dangerous too yeah. and i doubt that they emptied out the building that smoke can be like even oh uh, man made mineral fibers man yeah that stuff will mess you right up yeah so i think i think we ought to have some regulation to charging cuz i'm 99% sure this wasn't a 5 amp charge of a mod battery i'm pretty sure this was one of those 40 amp cycles that they I mean it it could have been just like it, it it could have been just somebody charging a battery dude it could but i doubt this it's really really rare that when you're just charging something with like five amps, it blows up, or even ten amps. But when you're doing those fucking forty hours, uh, forty amp oh, cycles, what are some it, of the? Here's a better question: What are some of the rules and regulations you would apply to? To oh, just uh, just a ma- just a maximum amp uh, withdrawal. You know, just that. Just say that you can't charge uh, above a certain amp. Well, who's gonna police that? Well. I don't know, but that's the same way you police, uh, you know, well, okay. We, I, I always forget that we're talking about America here. <laughs> Cause that race is packed fucking... full of people, Max. Pack. Yeah. Yeah. How are you going to police that? Cause in what Europe they... we police, we police a lot of things like this. You know, we have, you know, lipo, like if you're not wearing a lipo case and shit like that, that's like really strict in a lot of these races, but in America, I know it's different. But, I mean, maybe maybe the uh, there's lipo containment cases at the pits. I don't know. I think that would be one, but preferably, I think all this cycling silly shit should be. Well, man, hey, it. sometimes sh- those things just go. Like, sometimes just lipos just blow up, Max. Like when you're charging them, you can flat them. They are not oh, the most, yes. you know. But very. They rare. say electric electric pays the bills, but it also catches on fire. Yeah, I, I mean, I do agree that LiPo batteries are the most vulnerable ones of the lithium, you know, line. But still, the current ones we have in RC, you could do almost any type of silly shit and they'll be fine, you know. But if you do like this 40 amp cycle thing, I'm, I don't know. I wasn't charging with 40 amps. You? I wasn't. Yeah, but that was like one of your rusty old ones that's been in the starter box, right? No. Nope. Oh yeah, you had that in your office. I forgot about that one. I was thinking it was a lipo. One. I was just I had got the lipo a few months before and I hadn't charged it. And uh I, I went to charge it and she caught on fire. She went that smoke that smoke is so bad. Let me tell you. We did that at uh Jake you had a lipo fire at uh when he had the lipo fire at Southern Nationals, it was just a little small for S for my starter box. That stuff stunk out the entire. St- st- it's it's really bad for you. Like yeah. I probably I know I lost life, the <laughs> gulps of air. I lost precious minutes and hours of life breathing that shit. And like when I got home, my wife's like, "You stink." I was like, "Dude, the amount of smoke that came out of that battery mm-hmm. was incredible, yeah. incredible." Yeah, because it's it's basically the whole fucking thing evaporating into smoke that's inside the battery so yeah I'm, I'm, it wasn't a lipo containment center but the smoke still comes out right the lipo containment is more to stop the fire from spreading yeah yeah not the smoke maybe yeah, they need but... to be charged maybe we need to be charging in no that that's still a lot of, i would say specific areas but just be careful and luckily this was contained and yeah it, the smoke, well the way we do it at Euros, well, it's different to, like, it changes uh, uh, races, but for eight-scale Euros, uh, for at least for a long time, there was this charging uh, stations. Mm. So you weren't allowed to charge on your own, uh, like, uh, race spot. You'd be only allowed to charge, you know, at a specific point located. Um, obviously, that could have been done a lot better because, you know, that wasn't done that too safely, but... Something I do feel that we have to take stuff like this. A bit yeah, absolutely. Seriously. What yeah. is this? I mean, imagine if it wouldn't have been in a lipo bag, right? Yeah, yeah. And who's who's? I don't think he, I don't know about America, but a lot of these races I went to, people are not even using lipo bags. And well, I think I think in the uh, 
when you see stuff like this and you see the damage, because we're humans, right? We're like, oh, a, a battery is going to do all of that. Like our brain can't like that little re- I'll receive a battery could do this, right? I'll receive a battery. Yeah, yeah. Our brain can't can't grasp that. But yes, uh, it can do that. So I think with we're starting to see a lot more tracks put those rules into like, hey, you have to charge out of your car in a in a in a lipo sack, all that type of stuff. So we're mm-hmm. starting to see rules that should be there already starting yeah. to filter yeah. in there. It's a filter. It's a it's a it has to go through a whole bunch of filters before it gets there and it sticks. So there we go. I think we're starting to see that. I know like when you go to BRCA, uh places like that, if you are caught charging your battery not in a lipo bag, you will um you'll be kicked out. Right, you be kicked off. Yeah, forever. yeah. It's they they have it really harsh because I, I mean here in in Finland it's it's like yeah people talk about it but it's kind of like hey remember to put it in but I've heard of people being kicked out of meetings. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Because absolutely. not absolutely. charging a lipo bag, which is it's in some sense crazy, but I think you know when something like this happens, yeah, it's it, it, you do understand why they do that. Okay. All right, um, good stuff. Charge up your stuff in lipo uh, containment cent- uh, containment units, please. It makes a big difference. All right, Max. So uh, up let next- me talk. Let, let me talk about this. Shotgun. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we get all, before you get all excited about shock caps, we're going to go into some product releases, and this is brought to you by Corsa Tech USA, your one-stop shop for all things Corsa Tech in the United States of America. You can now purchase all your Corsa Tech range of products for nitro and electric power systems and accessories used by world and European champions David Ronafalk and Robert Badier. Established in 2022, Corsa Tech was founded by Adrian Bartin, uh, a former IFMAR world champion, as well as Oscar Jensen, a European champion in electric class, Corsa Deck is made by racers for racers, all available in the USA. You can find a link for Corsa Deck USA in the written description of this podcast. So Max is going goo goo for shock caps at the moment. <laughs> goo goo yeah, for I shock think, caps. Yeah. So this is the whole movement kind of started by uh, Fast Race in Italy. They made those honeycomb bladders uh, with the caps that have. Um, the flat top um, from the inside, so you could really put this on. Then, obviously, X-ray immediately copied it. All these brands, you know, put their own spin on it. Um, but RC Project has been one of those who is kind of really, really looking into this. Uh, Canas runs their stuff, um, and I think you know a big thing in the European scene has been the. The bladder. Explain to people, ex, yeah. Explain to people what these bladders do, because I see bumpy bladders, but for bumpy tracks, stuff like that. Explain. Yeah. That. Well, I'll okay. I'll I'll start out with uh, you know the basic question, which I get asked all the time. It's kind of like, oh, should I run bladders? Where should I run bladders? Should I run emulsion? My take on this is that if you are an average racer. Nine out of 10 times, you should run emulsion. Maybe five out of 10 times, you could be a little bit faster with bladder, but it's so much more chances to fuck it up that I think realistically, for most people, for most conditions, emulsion is the way to go in the current RC shocks. I think it's... um, for me, at least, I, I tend to almost always run emulsion these days. Uh, yeah, bladder probably could be faster at here and there, but that requires you to actually know what, you, what you're doing. You need to have knowledge which conditions fit which thing. And even then, most of the time, bladder uh, emulsion is actually better. So I think for most people, just run emulsion. I, I've gotten this question on the Discord many times. People ask me all the time. But I think no matter which brand you run, I think emulsion is almost exclusively going to be the easier option. It's the more versatile option. For cars like, you know, Mugen Associated, who have the shocks very leaned in, emulsion uh, or bladder can actually be a little bit easier to tune because you don't have as 
high speed inside the shock. The shocks uh, act much uh, slower. But then when you're running, you know, HP, Kyosho, uh, even Mayako, Sparko, all these cars that have shocks much more stood up, yeah, you, you're going to have a much easier time with the motion. Now, talking specifically about the, um, uh, what, what's it called? Uh, RC project. Um, bladders so they have um these bladders that have the you know extrusion of, of the bottom um and this is this is kind of the og style this is the style that uh og honeycomb style i should say it's the style that you know x-ray and and um fast rays um all these brands who have them before have had the maybe a little bit of an a difference is this one they have added some more reinforcements um oh sorry it's a uh, i'm talking about this one obviously <laughs> so the bumpy bladders um they say it's you know between emulsion and honeycomb but uh i think this, this is one of those things that you can fine tune on, but if you go to a race and you run bladder, you're going to have to take your shocks apart so many times to test it. You know, like there's three different ones. They have the, um, the honeycomb ones. Then they have the, you know, uh, well, I guess these two are the same, but they have different, you know, strengths or softnesses of these. And then you have the um, bumpy bladders. But effectively, the difference between these is that you have the o very OG bladder, which is just like, um, you know, an actual shock, which is the very soft and, you know, moving, which is filled with air. And then these days you have these, you know, semi type ladders where you have the movement, um, uh, in rebound, but on inbound, it's so stiff that you really don't have any, any movement in the, in the shock. And th these, these kind of honeycomb and especially this, um, the bumpy ladder, it's effectively getting closer and closer to emulsion with a little bit of give on the rebound. And this is what gives you the slight extra grip that you sometimes get from the honeycomb bladders. That all being said, I, I, I'm still uh, an advocate for always running emulsion. I, I think people should try these for sure if they like it and so on. I think it's great that we have brands that are refining and the way RC project does their stuff is they actually test everything out and they revise their improvements and so on. So it's good to see they just don't copy and paste like many brands. Oh, they pimp the shock like caps right out. I was just reading through it. They have, I'm not even sure what these circle things are right here. Uh, but even there, these things right there, I'm not, what are those right there? Uh, these are the emulsion. So this is basically just an O-ring. Oh, okay. That's the O-ring. I was wondering where, okay. I yeah. thought, okay, sorry, my, my mistake. But just looking, I mean, that's a nice O-ring. Then they, they, they went and got their own screws made special type of screws. Yeah. These are some really pimped out, like thought went into these shock caps. Something yeah. so small, but maybe something that so tunable as well. Yeah, I think, I, I think this is kind of, they effectively looked at the market, seeing the, you know, fast race, the flat type, seeing the ultimate, the more stiffer, but not as, you know, um, not as thick as the fast race ones, then the X-ray and AE ones where the uh, honeycomb structure kind of protrudes above uh, the, um, how would you say, above, you know, the cap is still round, but the honeycomb sort of fills that uh, cap. I think they kind of went through all of those. At least to me, it looks like they have understood why those things work. And now they have come out with, you know, kind of their, you know, implementation. Because at the beginning, it was kind of like people were just making them and they didn't know how they work. But I think here 
they understand like what actually works for a specific condition. And I think that's easy to see from the design. And I think that this will be probably the most interesting kit of the bladder thing because these are refined to a point where I think people might be able to tune them on their own. But then again, maybe they have too many options for some people. Um, but yeah, it will be interesting to see if, uh, you know, others are going to start using it. Obviously, Ongaro runs his uh, own stuff. Um, they have their own shock caps. He's kind of the one who brought this stuff onto the market. He he ran them with fast race. Everyone kind of copied him from there and other brands started running it. But yeah, I, uh, it's, it's a very, very complex topic. And I think if, if uh, you know, we talked about Dave Weagle, Weagle before on this podcast, and uh, if he would be, you know, looking at this, he'd be like, oh, no, because this is not, you know, what you'd actually be wanting to do with shocks. But for us, because there's so many flaws in the shocks, this kind of actually work. There, there is like actual on, on track function for this. But yeah, in terms of like trying to make the perfect shock, yeah, you wouldn't do it like this. But for us, they actually provide some. Okay. All right. I never would have thought so much uh effort went into shock caps honestly all right it's a big it's a big deal for sure i can it, see that i think like, i think you know it's pistons then it's shock cap and then you know rest of the shock really okay all right uh up next we have express the express xq11 touring car Hara has teamed up with express and they released a, yeah. a touring car did you did you want to bring it up or yeah i have it you have it Ooh, yeah. let's have a look here yeah, effectively, this is just a um, you know reanalyzed model of what they've had before. But I think it was interesting because I this brand has existed for God knows how long. I can't even put a name to it myself. For how 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 long it has been on the market? But I think this you know coming together with Hara and uh, they have put a lot more into their you know marketing. Um, and I think they actually had quite a bit of cool features on this car, which is why I kind of wanted to bring it up too. If it was just a rebadged, um, you know, X-ray or Mugen or whatever, it would be like, yeah, whatever, one, one more touring car into the market. But, uh, let me see if I can find, well, this is probably the best picture of to show this, but the, um, knuckle that they use they use the same both front and rear is actually a two-piece version so a lot of brands just have a simple knuckle and you attach the um king king pink balls to from the lower and the upper end well here they have attached an extra piece you can see this um pink one here um it's a separate piece from the black one that attaches to the bottom with this pink one you can add shims to the screw attachments, kind of like that um, new 10 scale rear hub where you have the shims to attach the link length. They have done the same thing here, but it doesn't only change the link length. What it also does, it's, it gives you adjustments for the kingpin. So for kingpin inclination in touring cars, I do, I do not know how widely it is used. But I'd, I'd imagine this to be a big thing, especially for tire wear, because you could have the caster the way you want it to be you can have much more tunability with the new style you know the triangle style arms but then on top of that you can adjust kingpin to you know keep the tire at a position where you want it or increase steering mid corner or make it more you know controllable controllable uh, on entry and i think this is a really cool feature to have this kind of active adjustment of kingpin inclination i am not certain if this has done elsewhere. It might have been done elsewhere, but this was something I spotted this weekend and I, I thought it was uh, interesting. Another, perhaps looking a little tiny, bit Tiny, tiny shocks too. Oh yeah, but this is kind of what what the evolvement has gone to. Uh, since Automatic, you know, came out with uh, their um, torsion shocks, uh, Every other brand has done this, you know, minimizing the shock height. And it's actually insane how little these things are. But as you can see, 
uh, from the front view. Um, well, I think the rear view might be even better to see the upper link is higher than the top of the shock. And you can see the bottom of the shock is so much below the rear arm. Uh, so effectively what they've done is they've lowered the attachment point on the arm a lot to get it as down as possible. And then that has allowed them to, you know, lower the shock. And then they also have to bring it a little bit wider to keep the effective angle of it the same. But it's crazy because the, the bottom of the shock is almost touching the tire and the ground. So it's a pretty crazy design, but this is effectively what all the brands are doing currently, X-Ray and and Mugen and the new Tamiya also has this type of stuff. I think the most interesting thing about the X-rays though, that they still are the only ones who have the shocks inboard, both front and rear. They have the shocks uh, on the center side of the uh, car, uh, whereas here you have it on the outside, which if, naturally you want to have the weight a little bit more centered. So I'd be interested to see if other brands implement that too. But this was an interesting thing to look at. Oh, and one more thing is that they have these uh, body supports here. This is they effectively they um, screwed in a 3D printed piece on the front bumper stay. And then there's this very tiny steel link with, with a screw on top that holds the top of the body. So in current, current era of uh, touring cars, the bodies are so light from the top and then the weight is put on the lower side of the body. So when they vacuum form the body shells, they try to put as much material on this uh, low part mm. of the body. So it's low center of gravity. That makes it really fragile on the top and they start to bend a lot. So that's why you see all these kind of body stays on these cars these days. So it was an interesting thing to look at. Mm, I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Good stuff. It looks pretty cool. Looks pretty cool. Yeah, it, uh, it looks interesting. And to add to this, there's actually a one more thing I found really interesting about uh, Express was that they are now introducing the sport version of this car. Uh, let me bring it up on the screen for those who are watching this. Um, this is same car, almost everything the same but they've used a lot more plastic parts on this one. As you can see, the whole bulkhead assembly, the shock mount, shock mounts, um, the lower arms, uh, the hubs, the knuckles, all of this is plastic. But to me, it looks like the geometry is rather similar. So I think it's interesting to see if this can, you know, make some difference in the price of uh, touring cars. Because if I don't remember wrong, the automatics cost uh, around 800 euros right now, just a kit, which is almost the <laughs> price of an eight scale kit uh, these days. And maybe coming, coming into this uh, touring market with some more cost effective solutions could be interesting. These are, this, this is still in the pre-order phase. So, um, I have no idea how much it's going to cost. I could actually check right now, but either way, I think it's cool to have this. And I've been thinking about this a lot. Um, Mayaka effectively did this with the, you know, um, M, what it was, M, MX24R, I guess the, the name was, which is the, has less tuning options and all that. And they could offer it at a lower price. And then for the, you know, big, big fans of the Mayako and the active people, they can buy the MPC kit, which has more adjustability and all that customize it. But you at the same time have to be more involved in brand. So I think it's interesting. It's interesting to have um, more, more options for uh, budget effective and then also pure performance kits. My buddy Chuck likes the express cars. He runs them up in uh british columbia what's up chuck how you doing all right pretty cool stuff max pretty cool stuff all right um i think that's enough product looks and rc news we're gonna go on to some races that happened this past weekend we already talked about desert classic later on this weekend uh but there were a lot of racing going on this weekend that's all bought to you by sidewinder fuel but before we do that remember to hit that sub like and notification button
And we want to thank Morgan Fuel for all their support. Morgan Fuel has been collaborating with many of the world's top drivers for over 40 years. And this has enabled us to test our fuels in the many of the most challenging situations and take the development of competition fuels to the next level. The result is Sidewinder, the market's most powerful racing fuel. This fuel is track tested and proven by national and world champions such as Ryan Cavallari, Ryan Mayfield, Greg Degani, Mark Vitas, our top driver, a little bump now over in Vietnam at Femca and many more drivers. These drivers appreciate that Sidewinder is blended perfectly for the high-performance needs of competitive racing. Don't let victory slip through your fingers. Purchase Sidewinder today. All right, Max. So we did have a lot of racing going on this weekend. You don't have it here in your notes, but I just wanted to say that uh, Thornhill had a race this weekend, and I looked at that track. I posted oh, yeah. up there. Man, when I look at that track, I just think that people are so fortunate to have that. That is probably the best indoor, you know, that's like indoor facility we've seen. It's got open sides. It's, it's pretty cool. They had a race there this past weekend. So, but also up first, we had the Florida RC Championships 10 scale round number one that was held March 2nd at uh, SNS Raceway in Tampa, Florida. That's actually Lee Setzer's, uh, the Setzer family track. Uh, they did put in a very good layout. Let's see if I can bring it up here. I did enjoy it. So this is one of those uh, track that's under a roof, but has open sides and it has poles. That's the only thing. It has, uh, you know, like poles that yeah. are in the middle of the track and stuff like that. And I think they did a pretty good job of building, uh, of actually building this track. I'm going to bring it up here. Let's see. We got Saturday qualifiers. We got some music on. I should have been prepared for all of this. But, uh, yeah, second round of the 10 scale side of things for the newly established Florida RC Championships. They had over 140 entries, 95 people. I think Lance is very happy with that. And, um, yeah, I don't know what to say, man. It was it was a great event, right? It, uh, it's, yeah. it, I've been talking to people who are... It's like Florida's kind of needed a new 10 scale scene for quite some time. Yeah. And they have it. They 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 have a couple of series there because so back in the day when they used to have I can't remember which series it was, Super Cup. So Super Cup used to be a big 10 scale series. It used to be packed. Packed. Like kind of 10 scale's been it's still a lot of 10 scale tracks, but 10 scale has not seen that popularity that it once saw at Super Cup. So it's good to see people excited about this. Like people are excited about 10 scale, not just 10 scale racing, but an actual series. So uh, a little bit more entries. They had the novice cars out there, 16 novice car, cars where they, they're ready to run cars. Uh, they were, they actually, so all the guys are up at beach RC for the Palmetto classic this weekend. So Patrick and Gene actually, and Lance all went through the, those ready to run cars and found very little problems with them. So they give the novice class ready to run cars to run, like complete ready to run, to run in this race. Two races on them, no real problem. So the hold not pretty good. Um, let's bring up some. Oh, we we, we 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 got some short bus going on here. So let's bring up some short bus, so people can have a look at the track that the guys yeah. uh, at the uh, at SNS Hobbies put in. Yeah, I think. I think it's good to see, you know, how well the 10 scale series has started. Because I was a little bit skeptical that, oh, can can there be as many 10 scale drivers as there's 8 scale in Florida? But apparently I, I shouldn't have been skeptical because first event they had almost 100 entries. Now they have 140. They're, you know, yeah, mm -hmm. it's still less than the Nitro uh, or 8 scale events, but still that's... Um, that's really good, and I think the same will start happening. That just the level of drivers is is going to go up and up. It's really good to see. It's really really good to see because you know back in the day we had JBRL in West Coast, and I think later on um, when we talk with Maddie and Davy, I remember Maddie saying that he feels that SoCal isn't the mecca of RC anymore, mm -hmm. and we talk about Florida becoming the one. They have all the tools to become one, you know. The way, you know, Jimmy Babcock has been a figure in West Coast, I think Lance has become that in the East. 
And I think the way Lance is doing it right now has the, all the tools to be sustainable for the long term as well. So I'm really excited for this. I'm really excited. Yeah, uh, and they will be doing some track. They'll be getting to some tracks that are actually outdoors as well. Yeah. Uh, this, I, I think they did a great job here. They put in a great layout. Um, the racing looked good. I did watch a little bit of it. Uh, let's go through. We're going to go through the seventeen five results here. We had Sean Cross out front, followed by Ryan. Ryan Harris is supporting this a lot too. Says so making a lot of content around it. Trent Walker, Carter Gonzalez, Michael Russell. Whatever were your overalls. They have double mains. They don't have triple mains here at this race. Um, let's see who won. They, they need they they didn't have as many mod drivers. I'm telling you, man, people like stock. Stock will yeah. always be <clears throat> bigger than mod at these races. In yeah, mod, think- you had Lee Setzer, J.R. Mitch, Nolan Manchester, Brad Nicosia, Paul Wynn, your top five. In uh two-wheel drive. Yep, two-wheel drive mod buggy. And Let's see. Let's see who won four-wheel drive. Lee Setzer, Nolan Manchester, J.R. Mitch, Mason Marino, and Kenny Setzer, your top five in four-wheel drive mod. So I'll be going to the beach line race, which is going to be a carpet. I think I have a feeling that's going to be probably the biggest race due to the location, due to it being such a great facility, and the first, the first track that's going to be carpet. Beach line has a big following as well. So I'm looking forward to this, man. And I think, like you said, I think it's doing pretty good for its first year. And uh, I think every every race is going to be better. Like it's not, like you said, it's not like the uh, eight scale but the eight scale took time to establish as well when he did yeah. it. So good job to the Florida RC Championships. Congratulations to everybody that took part in the 10 scale run. Good job. Good job. And uh, congratulations to uh, uh, Lee Setzer, Rossiter. And uh, Sean Krauss, I think Russell are on four-wheel drive, if I'm not mistaken, uh, 13 five. Yeah, 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 exactly. He was he he had that whole thing. I don't know what it was about, but he switched to Associated, and he's now... He's he never run an Associated car before like that. Yeah, and now he's... he's always been everything. a Losi guy. Yeah. So uh, he doesn't, you know, him and I think his dad haven't even owned an Associated car. All right, so we did have some nationals this past weekend that I did watch... The coverage from both of them were great. We did Italian eight scale IC offered nationals that were had at the AOL Club Pol- Policoro in Policoro, Italy. Uh, we saw Angaro, Polito, and Barufalo take the win. Uh, some of your po- you, you said Angaro looked dominant all weekend. Bertan was a little bit quieter after Montpellier Sussex so only had one TQ. And uh, Polito, Polito always looked strong in Italy though. That's the thing. I feel um, if you can actually play some of the video, I, okay. I have because the track track look pretty cool, um, and the coverage. I feel this is the big thing I found last weekend. Both Italian and Spanish nationals, amazing coverage. Like great coverage. Top, top great coverage. coverage. Okay, they speak Italian and Spanish, but hey, you know why? Why would they not? Uh, but yeah, it's great to see. Um, and yeah, about Berton um, and Polito. Berton TQ'd one round, but I, he was kind of lost all of the time. Like, I it, I it didn't feel like, you know, it was at Montpellier, where he was like absolutely in the top. Here, I don't know. It, it, I didn't get a, you know, like a, oh shit, he's doing good. But yeah, Omaro was consistently up there. Um, Polito... Yeah, like you said, he's always good in Italy. I, I, I don't know what it is, why he's not as good uh, outside of Italy. Um, maybe it's just that he knows these tracks. He's much more accustomed to these tracks. But yeah, Euros are going to be in Sicile, so I think he's going to be a big player there. Okay, this is probably one of the more tame Italian tracks I've seen. Uh, but I, I would have to agree with you. The coverage is great because... I watched some nationals or regionals last week from Spain, and I was like, "Wow, the coverage is good." He goes, "Well, you wait till this week and you see the coverage." And yeah. I have to admit, it was it was great. Uh, but there you see, we're we're actually watching a qualifier right now. No, no, this is the main. Oh, this is the main. It says yeah. classificas. Okay, that's why I thought it was like, so. Here's the main. Angaro's up front. Uh, no, no, probably like when I mean tame, it it has jumps and stuff like that, but no super elevation and stuff. It's kind of flat. Good to what yeah, we've seen. But I think 
I think we talked about this with Joseph, uh, just the two of us, um, a lot of the times. But I think, and we think both, that the big reason why Italians are so fast as they are is because of their tracks in general. Because even if you look at these tracks, there's no, not many like 180s and like stuff that where we just don't need speed. All of it is carrying speed, making, you know, quick movement, like all these hip jumps and so on. Uh, and same with Spain, to be honest, but the Italian tracks, you have to be on it all the time, but still be precise to maintain corner speed. And I think, well, you know, this is one of those tracks, once again, like all these switchback sections and 90 degree corners. It's, yeah. Well, I would also say that they also have quite a number of fast guys in, in Italy, so the competition level is always yeah. going to be high, too. You yeah. Know? Looking at these guys, like Reg 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 Rogali, Travesia, I'm all heard of these guys before, you know, Tessione. Yeah, yeah, I think Alante, I think, Polito, Gabriel, Astor, all these guys I've I've watched race yeah, before. Yeah, it, just looking at now the, I think there is only one or two guys. I'd say there's probably like four guys in the main who have never made a Euros A main. Mm. Everyone else has been in the Euros A main, and everyone in the top six has made a Euros A main. You know, and. I'd say how many of these? At least four or five of these have made the world's main name. Four of these have made the world's main name. So it's not like any of these guys are like, um, oh, good in Italy. Like most of these guys are really good everywhere. But yeah, I think, I think this is why, you know, the level of Italians are really high. And it's actually interesting now that we can see a lot of these nationals that, you know, we can kind of see what they do in there, why they're so good. Mm hmm. All right. Uh, moving on, we had the Spanish eight scale IC off road nationals. They were held at uh, Montjuic. I think that's how you say it in Spain. We're watching yeah. that now. Now, and I, so this is the, being done by ACAR, which is their federation. Yeah. And here we go from that seemingly kind of flat track to another one of these Spanish tracks that has yeah. elevation, yeah. Uh, lots of jumps, driving down, driving back up around. Chicane, another, but it's also a lot of 180s as well, but very fast. Robert is absolutely flying right now. He was good this weekend, and he made that mistake. Yeah, yeah I, I gotta, I gotta start out with that because Robert was literally leading for 40 minutes. He had TQ'd the race, you know, won the semi, started out front, had a like a 10 second lead, ended up crashing in the back with like under 10 minutes to go right here on the left hand side with no marshal and that let canas by robert then ended up making a few another mistakes which caused him a flame out with just two minutes to go which dropped him back all the way to six so a weekend where he was purely on pace beating canas and not even like oh he's close to him he was like really, really good all weekend, all the time, faster than Canas. And I think that's a really big feat from anyone at the moment. But, you know, from Robert, who just had a kid, he went this race kind of with no practice because he's been home with his kid. And yeah, I, I was really impressed with him. Sad. I, I mean, it's sad how it ended up uh, with the flame out and because he was in second when he had that flame out. So he would have still finished second even with those mistakes. But yeah, sad way uh, to end it, but really from beautiful, he... beautiful track, beautiful oh, track. Yeah, yeah, that's the, I think what we said about what I just said about Italy that kind of has happened in Spain, although a bit later on, I'd say it happened, you know, around 2015 or something. Whereas in Italy, you had all these guys at that point, but these tracks that you have, like any track you go to in Spain at this point, is so pretty. so so much like um, elevation changes, mm -hmm. um, all these technical sections, you know, up and down chicanes. So cool. It, yeah, and the flow amazing. of this track is amazing. It's, and yeah, no, we're, we're no wonder we have Pariente Brothers, uh, you know, um, Canas coming up with such force and all of these other guys. Yeah. Bob is absolutely flying. I love this track, Co concrete carving. You can definitely, you know what? You can definitely tell. I've got to the point now, I know each country's tracks. 
So I know yeah. what a French track is probably going to look like. I know what a Spanish track, a British track, yeah, uh, Italian track, the tracks you guys have up there in Finland, Germany. So it's it's weird. This is definitely a Spanish flavor track, uh, and because they they seem to have the biggest jumps and the most uh, connections. Yeah, but good sure. job, good job. Once again, look at this. I love this because I I was going through this and I was like, Danny, check this out. And I was sending different screenshots. Like I really liked this uh, separate battle going on. I like the overlays. They're using Avalaps, so it's good stuff. Very good stuff. But uh, congratulations to Juan Carlos Canas. I believe he takes the win out yep. there. And um, it's going to be a pretty good, if it's, I feel so bad for Bobby, but if it's going to be uh, like this all year, it's going to be a very great Spanish Nationals. And we're going to get to watch it all, even though it's in, in Spanish, which is fine for me. We get to watch it. All these associations and federations are putting the money in to get the coverage. So that means and something also, great. Also, for those people who are like, oh, I'm not going to even watch it, even if it's in Italian or Spanish, YouTube at this point has the function that does automatic translations. So you can get a gist of what's happening. I have those videos I talked about earlier on the podcast. I have at least, you know, five people who every time put comments on their videos, um, on every video in Italian. And they sometimes, if I have forgot to put the automatic translations on, they, you know, send me a message like, hey, can you put them on in Italian? And I just use like mm-hmm. Google Translate or something to reply to them. Uh, and it's great because... That's effectively what the, the modern era has um, allowed us to, you know, do. Um, use these oh, tools and this we is a good this, race. Yeah, we <laughs> got a spicy a battle between Badie. It yeah. looks like Juan Carlos Canas, and I want to say that's um, who's DPA. I don't know who that is. Uh, Daniel Parente. Yeah, okay, that's Daniel Parente, and then, woo, very nice, good battle. Bobby yeah. is in Bobby Smash mode right now. Yeah, yeah. For so for any anyone who wants to, you know, go check this out, you should because I, I should I should have checked this, but I'm like ninety nine percent sure it has automatic English translation. A E C A R T V. That's what it's called. A C A R T V. A E C A R T V on YouTube. Check them out uh, and go look at some of the racing from other parts of the world. Beautiful track. I just every time I look at the track, I'm just like, I really like it. I really like it. Yeah, really so do like that say, track. Yeah, at least the, you know, the A car video has automatic translations to English. So, yeah. It, it's what are you rambling on about, Max? All right. Up next was something big this past weekend. Big, big touring car race in Thailand. You was geeking out on this. And I, I saw that, like, um, oh, let me make that big. I saw that, like, Hagberg and Coelho and everybody went. But then when I saw some of the action, because we did see some, we did have some kerfuffle, kerfuffleage. In this race between mm-hmm. Volker and uh, watch, but let's have a look. This is what a beautiful facility out there, outdoor asphalt touring car. Tell us a little. This has been around for quite some time. This facility, yeah. Great. I don't, I don't have a specific date now. I should have probably checked that, but it's been forever since I remember. This has been a big, big, big event for all Europeans and and Asian drivers, and this has hosted at least once or twice the world championships to different on road classes. So it's a it's a very well known facility. What is it called? And, uh, Tell everybody what it's called, Max. Uh so it's the Infinity RC Attic. It's it's in Bangkok, Thailand, and I think I think it's open like for anyone to go to. They have a hobby shop, they have the track. Um no what's the uh, race they, called too? Oh the race yeah so it's the T I T C Okay. I'll just go through some of the pictures here, looking at people in the pits yeah. while we we talk about this. So tell us about this. What caught your attention about this race this weekend, Max? Yeah, so we'll obviously have fo- well, uh, follow this event every year because it's. I'd argue it's the biggest touring car race apart from the Worlds because uh, this is the one where all the Asians and all the top Europeans go. Obviously, some didn't go like Orlowski, but that was I was following this race. Red RC did great coverage uh, and so on. And we saw some pretty good racing too. Uh, I think we should uh, look at the look at the A A three video. Well, yeah, we can we can okay. start by looking at the A three video, which in general we just see because um, let's just quickly first go through stock. 
because that's our spec classes, which was the biggest, so over 120 drivers in spec. And uh, these guys, we had a completely European top three with Simon Lothar, uh, Louis Kretschmer, and Adam Isse um, filling the podium in, in spec. Um, and it's interesting because we, at this point in touring, have effectively pro drivers who only run spec class. And I think that's crazy. <laughs> These guys just travel the world running spec. Um, but yeah, the more more interesting for us is still the modified. All right. Well, let's bring up the first incident between Bruno and Volker, which uh, they seem to be okay with it after this incident. But mm -hmm. uh, is it uh, you did say you time stamped it, so let's see how good you are. We'll go off screen for a little while. There's Volker in front of him, I believe. Yeah, so Volker's leading. Mm -hmm. uh, he TQ'd the event, um, led for quite a bit on both A1 and A2. Um, and uh, they ended up colliding on both, uh, which dropped him really far down in the results. I don't know what happened in A3 specifically, but um, yeah, it should be happening. A this lap. Yeah, so yeah. so what happened? I'm trying to find where where they get together. Now, when I watched this, when I did watch this, uh, they kind of shook each other's hands and said, "Ah, oh, it was a mistake that's coming up." Bruno is really on it. Yeah. Ooh, 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 let's yeah. go back. Bruno, Bruno waits here, so I think it goes. We want to slow it down a little bit. Let's slow it down yeah. a little bit. So Bruno is definitely pushing the issue once again around him, right? Yeah, for sure. But I think, I think as it was, this was kind of one of those unfortunate ones because Bruno was really close by. He's so close. Volker kind of catches the curb a bit. Mm -hmm. So they just, you know, unlucky for both. Obviously, Bruno should have been a bit more cautious here. I think it's still to his blame. But I think, you know, Ronald make a mistake while Bruno was trying to be really close. Because for the next corner, that's actually a really good place to pass. You know, so I think Bruno was trying to be as close as possible so he could be setting up, you know, for the next corner. Um, but obviously, they ended up touching. Uh, Bruno had a body there. talk. Yeah, Ronald had a body talk. And Bruno waited there, which was good. And I think after this, neither of them was too more upset. Yeah, it was it, it was an unfortunate incident. I think Bruno took the blame and was okay with it. I think for both, the second one was more unfortunate. Uh, even Bruno said he wasn't too happy. I think on Red RC, um, he talked about not being happy to win the way he did. Because uh, can you bring up the A2 incident? Yeah, this happens on a different corner, and I think this is this is one um, which is more annoying for both of them. Mm -hmm. Right here, yeah. Because um, it, it, it already happened. Down. Yeah, if you can slow it down a bit, we can see. Okay. Yeah, they touch right there. Because that's one of those where Bruno is not alongside. Um, and uh, you're on the wrong one. I, to go no. to speed. I know, I just yeah. setting it. Yeah, go okay. ahead. yeah, because this is one of those where, yeah, Bruno is close here, Ronald maybe a tiny bit wide, but Bruno just straight up overshoots the corner. There's no room there for any move. He's not even by a long shot, he's not alongside, and the tap is. I'd say ridiculously small, so he could have easily avoided that if he just braked a bit more. Uh, unfortunately for Ronald, again, he has a body tuck. Because right here, mm -hmm. you know, they're still two and three. Hagberg is in the lead now, but they're still two and three. But I think all the way through this, Ronald has some form of a body tuck going, because here he stops for the marshal to fix it, and he drops way back. Now he, I'm surprised there's no rules about people jump on an track to fix that type of stuff. Like yeah, well, right here, Marshall. I think that's the Marshall. Okay. Yeah, 
But in on road, that's kind of the thing that the marshals know the body mm. count issue. I I really believe that either two of the things should be done. One is for the allowance of anti body body do- uh, talk things in the body. Um, that's one that should be allowed or mandatory. And the other one solution to this would be just to allow the drivers to cut cut that little piece off the bodies you know behind the rear tire you don't need to have you know body shell like you currently do have to have i think that would you know diminish so much of the issues you have with this because you saw that touch it was Mm -hmm. nothing you know and that ruined ronald's race straight out I don't know. I obviously, I, again, I'm not the guy who runs that much on road, so I can be like, "Hey, let's do this." But for sure, it's really annoying to see stuff like this. And because Bruno effectively waited for Ronald, yeah, Ronald had that body talk and and so on afterwards, which he, you know, got unfortunate with. And this, these two incidents ended up giving um, Bruno. And Hagberg. Uh, yeah, ha- yeah, Hagberg got the win in in um, this one, and then you know Bruno ended up getting the overall win. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it, and Volker off the podium altogether. Yeah, he ended it's... up finishing six. So, Oof. yeah, um, after the, so after the A two incident, because I did watch Red RC. By the way, you guys can go to Red RC, check out all the footage. They caught it right off before they. Uh, you know, like after A1, they went, they showed the guys, shook hands, and went on. But after the A2 incident, yeah, it was cut right off. So I'm sure they were not too happy about that. But Bruno takes the win, followed by Hagberg, Hagerberg, and Mark Reinhardt. Like, how many times have we seen those guys on podiums? Yeah, it's always those things. I mean, Hagberg got a. Um... How can I say he got a, maybe a bit lucky with uh, all the incidents because um, in A2 he ended up taking the win. Well, yeah, you same, gotta have same, luck in racing too. Yeah, same applies for Reinhardt though because he got the win in A1 after that incident we watched. Mm-hmm. Um, it was now Tomachikura in fourth, uh, Lucas Orbain in fifth, uh, Ronald dropped all the way down to sixth and because of those incidents and then. A Tamiya driver, Goto Sota, uh, in, in seventh, uh, Shin Savada, uh, in eighth, uh, Koki Kata, a one driver we've been talking a lot about on this podcast, in ninth, and then Yugo Nagashima in tenth. Okay. But yeah, I, yeah, it's, I feel really bad for Ronald because I know Bruno maybe didn't, it wasn't like it was intentional. So I don't want to be too harsh on Bruno. But I do have to say he was careless. For sure he was careless. But I think what he because he, he gave quite of a you know not that celebrating comment to Live RC uh after oh sorry to Red RC after win. Um like he well he said that he you know that he, you know, it wasn't his fault and blah, blah, blah. But he also said that um, he would like to win races without the drama and so on. But I think here the blame fully lies on Bruno. I, I And mean, he's dead body wanna... talks, right? You got to get rid of these body yeah. talks. It for sure. For yeah, for sure. But it's tough because I know Bruno is one of those guys who, you know, tries to be better he actually acknowledges when he does uh, bad stuff but also you know you gotta actually you know also not do this stuff stuff mm-hmm. take people out well we hear let's see i'm just reading uh reading her reading the article after rc uh red rc and they said as a race that has become the most significant in the world of touring car racing and its manufacturers uh, which is on par, if not exceeding the depth of competitiveness of the World Championship going forward. It might be time for the world's biggest local race to consider appointing a referee to ensure the amazing atmosphere, atmosphere that surrounds the TTITC is not overshadowed by incidents on the track. Yeah, yeah, I think I agree. And because 
when I can't remember if it was the last one, but the one before the last, I think it was around 2020, 2021, maybe 2022, when Akio Sabu won this race. He was battling against Ronald Walker as well. And they had this coming together where Akio really shot into the corner. They kind of, it was a side to side impact, but a little bit dirty, I'd say. Next corner, Ronald came back clean. And then on the finish line, Akio Sabu just straight up shot. Uh, it was a 90 degree corner. So he went full speed from the inside of Ronald and got the win. And then there was all this sort of similar type drama um, with uh, them. And I think in touring cars in general, when you have tracks like this that are big, uh, with the really, really high curbs, really big curbs, you have a lot of room to play with. And um, with overheating tires, uh, the high grip, you really can you know gain time, lose time. So this type of stuff happens. And I 100% agree. With races like this, I think there for the organizer, there's a responsibility to have official judges be it appointed by the local federation. Now, this in this case, would be a FEMCA or uh, even the Thailand Federation. But some form of, you know, referee and some form of rules that need to apply to keep it not a free-for-all. Because I do think, you know, Bruno should have been penalized for both of these incidents uh, in some way. Because even if you wait for another driver at the end of the day, it, it's not... I don't. I think that's kind of the wrong way to do it because you saw in the second incident he waited, yeah, for Ronald, but then Ronald had a body tuck. So who does that help in the end? It's these are tough questions for sure, yeah. And I don't want to be the guy to blame Bruno because I, I, I don't. I know he didn't do that um, on purpose. Yeah, it wasn't like I think he was just being careless. You know that that's. Really, I think he's just trying to win. For sure, yeah. yeah. And, I, I, and these type of tracks, as I said, it's high grip, high curbs. It's really easy to make those mistakes. But, you know, for example, Reinhardt, you'd never see him do stuff like this. He's he's really good at following drivers. So you still you know got to put blame on do him. stuff like this? Your hero. Naruto. You still got Naruto, still one of the top. Right? You had to throw in a little Naruto. Let me tell you. Max likes Naruto so much, his like profile picture was Naruto for the longest while. Yeah, it was. <laughs> uh, but yeah, now that I, I have to say this because it's true. Um, Naruto <laughs> running Infinity, I haven't seen him in a big race in, in Electric on Road for a while and goes there, finishes fourth, a solid result. Um, against a lot of, you know, European competition and so, so forth. So I think that's good. Another thing I wanted to say was, uh, as I said before, Koki Kato. So he's the guy who, you know, runs associate in Futen Scale. Seems like Infinity has picked him up to run other classes. He won, he was, um, not one, he made the main at the eight scale on road worlds, um, uh, in Japan. Mm. Um, uh, last, at the end of last year with Infinity. Now he went to this race with Naoto with, uh, Infinity stuff, made the main. You know, I have to say, like, Jill's Grosskamp, um, a lot of, you know, these OG touring car drivers did not make the main, whereas he's there fighting, um, fighting with the big, big shots. Um, so, yeah. Also, um, Tamiya uh, and Infinity and Express, kind of unknown brands in the Western market. But in Asia, they've been kind of having a lot of, you know, boom. And I think this race shows that, you know, there's automatics cars, there's medium cars, there's x-ray cars, and then there's also infinity cars and the uh, Tamiya is right there, you know. Um, I think it's good to see, especially Tamiya with coming out with a new platform uh, and also the fact that they are back into racing, at, it seems full time. Um, but that being said, x-ray coming home with Yet another one two. I think they went to Snowbirds, came home with a one two three. Here one two. Only guy I have to say this. Only guy I think could have beat both Ronald and Bruno, considering their recent form. Uh, Michel Orlowski. What do you think about mm -hmm. that? Um, I see you have it there in notes. I would have to agree with you there. Yeah, I, I think I right think... now he's the only guy that could beat these guys. 
Yeah, because right, it's it's like Ronald and Bruno have for mm-hmm. sure looked stronger. We cannot than we cannot Reinhard. forget about Hebert. Hebert, Hebert is re- very good in touring car. Kevin Hebert. Yeah. yeah, he's good, but I don't think he he is really good in America. I believe he won snow. Track. Did he not just win snowboards? Yeah, he won snowboards. But I remember because um, he used to come to ETS a lot back in the day when he was running mm. Associated. But he he used to complain about the tracks because they're so much bigger than in America. Even the paved tracks are so much um, bigger from like Thailand and Europe than what they do in America. So I think that's going to be the biggest uh, difficulty for him. But yeah, maybe, you know, as I said, we talked about this a bit before. The American touring car scene is sort of slowly getting better, getting alive. Maybe they could put some, you know, Put some battles to the Europeans and the Asian drivers, but I mean it's a long way go, uh, to go still. But perhaps, yeah, who knows? But I think right now the top three names in on road easily are Orlowski, Bruno, and Ronald. Reinhardt, he's up there. Same with Hagberg, they are up there, but they are not there consistently. Here, like this race, Hagberg, he was good. Some other races, he's been, you know right about the top five. Same with Reinhardt. Some races he's fighting with these guys, but sometimes he's, you know, a little bit off. Whereas it seems like it's always Bruno and it's always Ronald and it's always Orlowski. You know, that one of those guys is always on the podium and uh, consistently. So, yeah. Nick, I, I cannot argue with that. I cannot argue with that. But you know what? Orlowski is actually at this race because these are the races to watch this upcoming weekend. Uh, we got Static Cam from uh, the... Uh, I, I, British Offroad GP being yeah. held in Milton Keynes. This is, I believe, the third time they've done this. Uh, DDRC, Daily Dose of RC TV, is the people doing the live stream. That's what we're currently watching today. Silverstone RC track is the host track. I used to go to this track when I was uh, living in the UK. Basically, it's a big carpet track in a mall in, in the UK. If Scotty there, so Scott is there, like so that's gonna attract the American voice, and he's you can he's calling a race. Uh we saw this last year. I know that the BRCA was heavily involved in it this year, maybe not as much. I know they're involved, maybe not as much this year. Uh I know they had like try me tracks and all that type of stuff last year at this event. Not sure what's going on if they're having it all this uh, this year, but they have quite a top few top European names there. We're watching actually this is streaming now. We're watching some of the uh Qualifying Q2 going on. I have to say, kind of a mild track, I would say. Yeah, I, um, I, when I saw it, I thought it looked good, but it's it's still the, it's not still not as cool as the US tracks by Pavel and that Beachline track, which I think are the top tracks mm-hmm. in carpet racing these days. You know, those those two you know events uh, have been the best. It's not bad here either. It's not. It's not bad by any means. But I think. Yeah, it doesn't it, have that wow be. factor. It doesn't have that wow. Jump yeah, factor. I think. I think. I think it has a, a lot of the necessary features for a cool track, mm-hmm. but it's just not. It's. It's not fully there. It's not fully there. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but I don't get that. That feeling. But that being said, it's still good. It's still. Angara is there. Did not know yeah, that. so I was I was just about to you know look at a little bit of the results because we have gotten Q one done. Mm-hmm. Our last uh, Skidmore, Angaro, Carap, Craig, Tommy Hall, yeah. Martin yeah. Byer, Kobovic, Josh Haldsworth in seventh, Kobovic, Elias Johansson, Miko Wittemeyer. We could, Miko was at an awesome track this past weekend. Max Glotzel, you know Hartnan, spelt it wrong. They spelt it H A A R T A N N. Yeah, I think that's because the the UK system doesn't know ah letter. They got they they got quite a lot. Jeez, I'm so They got 189 entries in two wheel drive. Yeah, yeah, they have they have a lot of entries. <laughs> hey, you know what? I forgot to say happy birthday to my good friend Miklos, who's at this track, and how I know at this race because I know he was there. But then I also tuned in earlier, and he he had something wrong with his car. This is well, it was his birthday last week. Happy birthday to you. Um, hey, you know, I think this is a great event. It's in a mall. It gets it gets RC in front of people. Am I the biggest fan of the track this year? No, nope. but at the same time, it it uh it is a track for everybody. It's a little bit mild, and I think it's still going to make for some good racing. I look forward to the finals. You can check out all the information 
all the uh, and I think it's all a live RC, so everything's pretty good. And yeah. it's daily dose of RC is where you can find it doing all the live streaming. They got Scotty doing all the calling, so check it out. We're watching some of the stream now. Uh, also, going on the secret, we have the Palmetto Classic, aka the Nats warm up up uh, 10 scale dark nats warm up at beach rc uh the elite rc productions crew has gone up there to do that i was actually supposed to go too but i extended my time home uh well, you know what we're doing all this because everybody's lead we're leading all up to dnc which is coming up next week uh but also they have the femca we talked about this earlier the femca, femca ic buggy championships being held in ho chi Ming city vietnam you saw a little bump going over there. Obviously, he's from Vietnam, so he's going over there to do a family slash race. Uh, Christian Wall, Wall Hunter, overnight TQ. But this Femka race does not have the top guys in Asia, really. No, it doesn't. And no, no disrespect so... to uh, young Martin. He's good. But there's there's no, you know, there's there's no Bernard. This is such a shame. This, that yeah. Femka yeah. does not hold that weight anymore. The Australians mm-hmm. ain't going. The New Zealand guys ain't going. You know, there's no fast Asian, no real, no Japanese drivers there. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it's early one in the too early in the year. It's March. Um, no, but you have to consider that for the Asian scene, most of them live below the equator. So for them, summer is, you know, the winter. So it's effectively end of the year for Australians now. I mean, it, it's let's let's bring up some yes, a video here from Q4. Uh, coverage has been brought to you by. Do you remember when Asia RC was banging, banging, banging? Like, when we have a lot of races over in Asia, and they were just a yeah. part of a lot of that stuff. Um, yeah, they still do it, but I think I think since COVID, that has mm-hmm. been. I think we don't realize it in the West how strict the Asian countries have been with COVID because they. I think at still at this point they have some travel restrictions at play, so you know that's been a big issue because you you can travel like within China, within Vietnam, within Taiwan, you know, but traveling from Japan to Vietnam might not be as easy as people like assume in, initially. Um, I don't know how it is with Australians, but yeah, I think. I think big issue. Oh, I don't know how bad it is either, but this just ends up being pretty much a race between the Vietnam guys, a few like the guys, from, you know, from maybe from Thailand and stuff like that. Malaysia, they, they and their the, yeah, they have they have most of the Southeast Asians, and I believe they have a good amount of Koreans there. Yeah, but, but like they, that young kid, he's pretty fast. HK, he's from Korea, he's there, but no, no, um, no Kyle McBride, no Bernard Zex, no. Um, can yeah, I, but I think no, not I, these guys. I think I don't know why no Japanese. That's to me, that's because really this race odd. isn't worth anything. This this race has lost its its appeal, its prestige. I think. Whereas it I, it doesn't. So the Australians won't go because they say, "Well, it doesn't see us for worlds, right?" Because they go from the Australian. They say that this yeah. this race should this race should. I've talked to some of Australian friends. They think that Femka should place you in the worlds right yeah um and just i i just think it's it's once again just very early out i mean and also you got to remember a lot of these australians new zealanders and other drivers just traveled to new zealand for the asian buggy championship or not not and and they're probably saving their money to go to the philippine masters yeah, but I don't think I, I think when you say it's very very early out, this is the end of the season for many people there. Summer is there now. Yeah, but I'm just saying it's just it's I don't there's no hype about it. Like I didn't know Fampico was going on this weekend. You know, you know what I think is the real reason? What? I think the real reason is that it's mostly done by the Chinese speaking people right mm. now. last year it was in taiwan now it's in vietnam a lot of it is handled through the chinese speaking countries and i think in asia that's still a big thing for example japanese they they don't get along with <laughs> with the chinese that well we know from history with australians they you know they do what they do 
obviously the, we have a few amount like a good amount of uh, people from Australia, but not all of them by any means. So I think that's the main difference because before COVID, these FEMCA championships were held in you know Japan. They were held in big venues in China, which like everyone knew from before, like you know Xiamen or places like this, and then it was in Australia even. For these these events, the promotion and all of that is more easy. But I believe like a lot of these FEMCA stuff has kind of disappeared into the Chinese speaking community. So for outsiders, I think that's why it hasn't attracted uh, so much. But I agree, it, the prestige has been lost because last year we remember we had this thing of the COVID travel restrictions were still in order to Taiwan. So effectively, unless you were from Taiwan, uh, had some specific passes from, you know, Korea or whatever, it was really difficult to get into Taiwan back last year. And they still held the FEMCA championships. They call it the FEMCA championships. And from what I've understood, there has been a little bit of um, an unacceptance of that uh, inside the community in Asia. Obviously, I don't know enough of that to, you know, give like who's wrong or right. Or I've heard the rumblings as well, as well. Yeah. Um, anyway, it's going on. It's got a little bump there this weekend. And then I guess you'll be getting ready for DNC. We're going to talk about DNC before uh, when we finish up this podcast. Yeah. But right now, if you want to watch some racing this weekend, we got Florida, uh, we got Pomato Classic, we got the British GP, and we got this race going on as well. And I'm pretty sure there's some other races going on that we'll see here at some point uh, this, this weekend. It's Friday. All right, Max, I think it's time. We're going to go on. We're going to uh, go have our chat. We're going to talk about the Desert Classic and some 10 scale racing with Davy Bada and Maddie G. And uh, that is brought to you by Techno RC. Techno RC. Techno RC is a championship winning manufacturer of high performance A scale, 10 scale, nitro, and electric RC buggies and trucks. With a worldwide dealer network, USA and Europe based headquarters, comprehensive warranty program, and global race support. Techno RC is excellence in RC. View the full lineup of Techno RC race proven vehicles by visiting www.technorc.com. Max is geeking out over this race this past weekend. We haven't had this uh, vice vice host on for quite some time as well. As you can see, he's moving on up in the world in this big pimping house that has got in the background. Don't mind his earphones that are. Uh, disappearing, but welcome, Maddie G, aka Glitch RC. Uh, we're here. We're going to talk a little bit of what you've been doing with Hobby Wing. We got a special guest as well joining us here in a little while. We're going to talk about the Desert Classic, but welcome back, dude. You, you know, yeah, we're back, you know, at uh, from the ground up, you know, after I think the world it was a pretty uh, devastating event, and uh, we decided that we needed a job because uh, toy car racing probably wasn't going to get us very far. Huh. Well, looking at your surroundings in the background, obviously we have to up our requirement for uh, advertising on the podcast for Team Pitch. <laughs> you know, we're going to have to, you know, looking, you are in very good uh, prowess. We need to get you up top, on the top row. <laughs> there. And uh, that's going to cost you big time. That's going to cost you big time. Welcome back, Matty G. First time really talking with Max. Max kind of wanted to get you and her to geek out. He's kind of freaking out uh, over stock racing. Uh we have Davey Bada coming on in a little while. Who won two wheel drive her at, at Desert Classic? Your, I don't know if we're calling him your protege or Padawan. You're a little bit too young to be his Jedi Master. You're just like a Jedi Knight, maybe just a friend, a big yeah, brother Jedi. I, I, I think friend because we were because we were racing stock at the same time. He was running mod actually when like uh, I was running stock. And then he was like, I, I want to win some national titles and yeah. stock. And then, yeah. yeah. Um, he's he's like kind of like just getting his Jedi Knight knighthood. And you've had it for a few years. So there we go. There's our ranking of Davey Bada in the Jedi, RC Jedi world. He's coming on to talk with us a little bit. Tell us a little bit about his race weekend. Congratulations to him on taking two-wheel drive. Uh, I guess, Matty G, tell us a little bit about what's been going on with you. Some big changes have happened in your life. Since the last time you've been on this podcast. Yeah. So uh, I took a job with a uh, hobby wing in North America, uh, helping them develop and uh, kind of build up their stock racing like program. 
Uh, we picked up a couple of uh, super fast guys. We got the Raymond twins, you know, the, uh, I can't remember like, what you call them, but uh, yeah, the Raymond twins are on board. We got Kai Goff, uh, super fast, like Florida guy. We got Tyler Hooks, another super fast, like Florida guy. Uh, Dustin Fox, who is uh, primarily just runs on carpet in the U.S., but he's super fast. Uh, we got a couple other guys that I'm forgetting. These are all stock guys, Max. Yeah. Just so you these, know. This is like all, the oh, competitive yeah. stock class of America. Dude, dude, I think, I don't know what happened, but I think I have somehow uh, saw the light, you know, seen the light. Because <laughs> like a few years back, you tell me stock, I would just like zone out. I wouldn't give a shit. Kind of like when I talk about, you know, Axel Blanche. But these days, I kind of, even in touring, I kind of realized that mod is just for the pros. Like, like even at this race, they barely had a V main in modified. Whereas in stock, you have like, I don't know at this race, but usually you have hundreds of entries, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Like it's, it's like, I think modified has kind of killed himself, killed, killed themselves in some way. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all for the stock. Well, it took me a while. I was the biggest stock hater for the longest time. AKA, still all that pink pinion bullshit. Yeah, it is, it is what it is. But uh, what I've got as a spectator getting to watch some of the stock racing, you see the competition there, you see the adversity there, you see what I the drama, you know, like faster motors, all that type of stuff. And you don't get that in in uh you know cheating getting motor stripped on you don't get all of that in mod because everybody's got a fast motor all right so tell us a little bit about your job dude is like how does your job work like what are you doing what the what goes into making a successful stock program for one of the biggest ESE motor producers in our industry yeah um just having someone able that has background knowledge with stock motors um running them, developing them, having success with stock racing and the knowledge that's been gained throughout the years. Like I've, I've ran a lot of different motors. I've ran for a couple of different like companies. Um, and this last year, the Raymonds and I went independent fully on what we ran. I think we ran at least every motor like company, like, I think out there um, just doing testing on my own and just seeing what we thought was the very best. And then, uh, you know, after you learn all that stuff, you can kind of bring knowledge to a company and show them what uh, you've learned and uh, kind of give them your input. And then you can keep building off of that for years to come, which is what uh, we have coming here soon. Right. And now your job moves from not so much. You will race at some of these events. Yeah. But your racing isn't what's important. You're going no. there. And, and Charlie Swanker has been traveling quite a lot. I think more, yeah. I've seen him travel to more races this, this year, this four last few months. Yeah. And I haven't quite some time. So tell us a little bit about that. Like you guys put, put some money into this because you're traveling yeah. quite a lot. Yeah. So uh, I talked to Charlie uh, actually the last day of qualifying at the Worlds about a job. Uh, it had been approached to me about a year ago when I was uh, running for Trinity to come work for Hobby Wing, uh, help them develop a stock team and like, stuff like that. And at that point, uh, everything wasn't, I was kind of like, oh, I still want to race and be like, you know, the guy, which uh, at the Worlds, I was like, I gave myself two years to kind of do something and I would have some moments of greatness, but the moments of greatness and the moments of not successful moments outweighed it it wasn't making sense for me to you know continue to try to be a professional rc car driver when i had so much more knowledge i feel like in motors and batteries and speed control settings so uh, i talked to charlie again at the worlds and he said yeah we had brought it up again and your name gets brought up quite a lot so uh we talked and then uh charlie and i've been traveling the country for you know since November now they brought me out to the to Scotty's carpet event in Cleveland. I did that. I did the Clash of Champions at, at Hoosier. Uh, we had a couple of guys in uh, the stock mains like running our stuff for like the very like first time. Uh, Dustin Fox actually won uh, Scotty's race with the the G four, the seventeen five at that time, and then Chase Raymond had won uh, the INS round at a uh, at Hobby Action. 
just uh, the same the same weekend with hobby wing stuff. So my first week on the job was pretty good, and now with stuff that we got coming, we're trying to uh, you know make sure we've covered all our bases, make sure that everything's good to go for the the nationals that are coming up here soon. <clears throat> I think you're muted still. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I was interested more so because um, I was kind of because I didn't really know much of your background in motors. I obviously knew you had the the glitch um, brand that you was doing yeah. work under. But are your focus mostly on like product development, or is it just kind of like split between team management and setup and product development, or um, are you like, really focused on that? With with, I think we have a combined group of people who we like decide for team manager stuff like Charlie and I and uh, the people at the office. And then, then some of our, our like VIP drivers do uh, do some of the consulting on like who we bring on and all that, like the like fun stuff. And then uh, like with the product uh, development, like I'll get just 10 stuff to test. Like get, give Charlie like feedback. Then we sit and like break it down and figure out um, what is actually like going on. Charlie's had a lot more experience with product development than I have so he's able to decipher more of what I have to say from a racer's like standpoint to more of like what the engineers will understand yeah do have you had already any chances of like making motors from scratch or stuff like that or are you kind of just refining refining the products that are available um, doing? so we uh been testing a lot of stuff out here and uh hopefully soon everyone will be able to see uh I would like to say that I've had a good amount of input on what is coming out here soon. Okay. That sounds really exciting. Have you personally been in touch with like, uh, yeah. Uh, so the Chinese, Chinese yeah, people? the, uh, the benefit of all this is being a, being in direct contact with, uh, the engineers over at, at, a uh, hobby wing, uh, just giving them like feedback on all the testing I've done and like notes uh, we have a tunalizer, which, uh, you know, I make a spreadsheet of all the stuff that I change notes, run to run all that, like fun stuff and just give them as much data as I can after like every run, uh, the speed controls have an internal like temperature gauge. If you run our motor and speed control, so you can see how hot everything is inside of the motor, instead of just checking the outside temperature with a temp gun. Cause in an ideal world, when rotors get over 150 ish, uh, they start to drop off a little bit throughout the five the five like minute run, so then that's dragging more voltage from the battery, all that like fun stuff. So being able to like test all this like stuff out and them having tech this technology that not many other like manufacturers do is a you know huge uh I would say benefit to what these guys got going on and what they want to do with stock racing. Yeah. Okay. That that's. That's pretty interesting because I I'm kind of like I'm studying obviously engineering as yeah. I've discussed many times before, but electric uh, stuff is quite far from my you know understanding. But I think through RC I kind of have gotten some idea. So I kind of wanted to ask you like how did you get into this? Did you just you know start uh, disassembling your motors and like uh, trying to make them work better or did you have so, like, um, some reading or something like yeah that? so when i ran for phantom uh they were so far away that communicating i'd be like yeah i tried this and it did this and they're like okay so uh my buddy craig who was the team manager who still is the team manager for phantom like we would go back and forth on stuff to try and then i met uh this guy at ocrc named uh JD like Ramsey and he taught me a lot of the stuff on like the motorizers and tunalizers on how to get like the most out of like your motor. And then it was all like downhill. Like from there, I just went on a spiral of like tweaking out on all this stuff. I'm like what you could do to the motor to make it faster. And like a legal standpoint, like we were dunking the staters and mineral spirits, like trying to get them trying to get like the factory, uh, what's it called oil like off of them to get everything clean and then just try to get the most amount of power with uh, the most amount of like efficiency and all that stuff. Yeah. There's a bunch of guys who I learned from like throughout the years, but I think uh, JD had the most amount of, of impact for sure from like the motorizer like standpoint. And then now going to the tunalizer that, that hobby wing makes 
just being able to like bring that information over. Yeah, I think I think that's a very interesting aspect because I guess a lot of people who work in RC kind of have one of the two, you know, routes. They kind of be a driver and then they become a team manager or some some of the sorts. And some like they drive as young, then they go to study for engineering and then they come back as a full time engineer. But yeah. you kind of went between the two. You kind of started a racer, then you know, taught yourself skills and made it a job. I think yeah. that's very, because this is what we talk with um, Kay, to making yourself uh, a job in the industry. I think this yeah. is very interesting because now you're basically, you know, monthly salary and working in the industry, kind of doing what you love, I guess. Yeah, no, I'm I'm at the track. I think I, like every, I was talking to Davey about it. He goes, you drive way more than you used to. And it's like, yeah, yeah like I'm there enjoying myself, like testing motors, testing speed control settings. The newest fad is testing different gauges of wire on the speed control for stock racing. So it's just been a whole, honestly, like life has been a lot more enjoyable doing what I love with the whole, the whole motor thing. When I was a kid, I always felt like uh, there wasn't transparent, like, like information with how to charge batteries or how to tune motors. And that's where the team glitch thing kind of started where I was like, well, if I could give the power that I have to everybody, I think everyone would have a lot more of an enjoyable time at the track than uh, they already are having. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's, that sounds like that makes me happy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, Keenan, I will have to now go into some actual science mode geeking out. I know we've oh. been discussing with Maddie, just the two of us. I thought that was it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, no, he's, he's, uh, I can tell. You don't have that much time, important. so let's go, get cracking. <laughs> okay. So uh, you need to timestamp this. So if people don't want to hear about all the science, because I'll start with kind of a more simple one, because you obviously went from a long time being stock racer to modified. And mm -hmm. I, I have never raced uh, stock, like probably when I was a kid in touring cars, but never in off-road. And for me, you know, the electronic setup was always just how to get it as smooth as possible. And yeah. I know we, I, I ran LRP, which are notorious for being really aggressive. So I always, you know, try to find small rotors, uh, like try to find a way to make the delay feel, you know, direct, but still yeah. smooth. So like right now, which you're working on that, do you feel like there's, it's easy to set up modified or do you feel it's like, how, how do you would, uh, uh, you know, divert the setup of stock and setup of uh, modified? Honestly, like the hobby wing mo modified line of stuff is really smooth. So it makes it easier to kind of tune stuff and like you're not taking power out essentially. You're just figuring out how to make it more efficient uh, and modified. Like I think Orlowski is probably one of the only guys who uses our tunalizer on mod motors, which I don't understand why more people don't. Um, just using that tool to go through rotors, get get the balance of the rotor. Uh, there's a symmetry on the rotors, which is like the balance like between them, the lower like that is the more efficient your motors are going to run, all that fun stuff. Um, just going through all that stuff, going from, you know, the end bell timing externally, you could say 30, but internally it's like 35. Like just having everything run more efficiently, you know, you're getting the most out of your power throughout the five five minute run. I know most guys are going to just laugh and be like, yeah, this does, this stuff doesn't matter. Like I won the race without doing any of this stuff. But at the end of the day, if people did do this, just think how more efficient everything could be. Well, this is why stock is big, right? Because of all yeah. this tinkering stuff and yeah. making the motors yeah. faster, speed secrets, and all this type of stuff. So, so it's a big part yeah. of it. Do you play with the ESC setup a lot on stock? Or yes. I, I, I believe you can too, like yeah. the, the frequency and stuff. Yeah. Like that. So, so uh, something that Hobbywing has is a variable drive like frequency. I use it yeah. in both stock and modified. Uh, in modified, I run it backwards so it's softer. But then in stock, you can run like the bottom end at 2K and the top end at 32. So it just makes the motor run more efficient instead of just you're pulling 2K of frequency the whole time. It like ramps itself up and stuff like that. It doesn't change timing or anything like that. Uh, a lot of people have asked if it does. It doesn't do anything like that. It just makes the motor run more efficient. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting because I feel now, like back in the day, um, let's say maybe like 10 years ago, you only had timing and punch. 
Yeah. But these these days you have so much more because you have the variable yeah. frequencies and you have like uh, the adjustable throttle rate stuff. Because yeah. like because most people think run it high, as high as you can for the most amount of power. But something that uh, we've been learning over time with how fast these stock motors are getting is that you don't have to run it at 30 to get the most amount of your motor. Running it at 30 sometimes can cause the tires to spin coming up to jumps. So like at the beginning of a run, it's fast. And then at the end, it starts to taper off because you're spinning the, you were already spinning the tires coming up to the jump at the beginning to where the point now at the end of the run, like the tires have already spun out as much as like they can that you're not efficiently putting power to the ground. So you're just dragging like more voltage like out of the battery and stuff. Yeah. Um, one more thing I, I really wanted to discuss was the rotors. Because to mm-hmm. me, that was like a, a Heureka moment where in, in Modified where I could go to lower rotors. But for stock, it's kind of, at least for a while, it was like, I think you run like 13 millimeter, 13.5 or something. No, crazy. so it's 12.5 12, 12. is all that you're allowed to run. Um, yeah so 12 5 and the longest it can be is 26 which most make it like 25 like 99 just to be safe uh most of the time you're tuning with strength the stronger the rotor is the more torque it's going to have but it also doesn't it's not affected well like under heat so it's just a a matter of like what you want to do there i'm like if you run a weaker rotor it's more rpm you have to gear it like differently all that fun stuff have you you on stock you cannot go even lower is that the case you can go lower but most of us don't yeah because i remember for mod it, it's usually i felt it was better because that at least when i was running uh, lrp it was always the bottom was the the one that you were struggling with yeah and then you could run you know you could still have more top end with the uh, with the smaller one yeah okay so but do you you said you um tune the strength do you heat treat the rotor no, so or? uh the rotors come from the factory with uh with like certain with certain like strengths um usually you're you want anything above 1700 like 17 uh 17 like 50 for it to be you know for it to be able to power through the load that all these like motors are under okay yeah that's that's really interesting because I feel there's so much still to be, you know, figured out because when it was running um, brush motors, obviously people were like ironing and everything out, trying to get most out of it. But since we moved to LiPo batteries, uh, brushless stock, I feel there has never been a point where, you know, the efficiency was an issue because you could always put in a larger battery pack, yeah. um, put in more power if you wanted. But I, I feel... I feel there's sort of um, a next step coming for electric racing, which I want to kind of talk about next. Uh, but did you have, I saw Keenan, you had something you wanted to ask, Maddie. <clears throat> so I know, are we, are we using, starting to use a lot more uh, of settings in our radios on these cars now too? It's, it's especially that, in modified. Yeah. Like, it's more of a modified thing. In stock, you mm-hmm. just run it, the throttle at a hundred. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think very few drivers are still taking. I say this because I know Hobby Wing and Fly Sky have a some sort of thing going on. I, I, I don't know what it is. I think it's more for the crawling crowd of things. If I'm not sure, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, yeah, I was just wondering if the combined settings between that ESC do you take into do you take settings in your radio into factor as well? Can you or could do you combine those two settings to get the perfect mix? Yeah, I'm like, uh, there's definitely some kind of like middle ground with like more of like the brake setting than on the Sandwa radio. Mm-hmm. There's the throttle feel setting and the steering feel setting that you can like adjust and turn down. I think the Futaba has the same stuff. I'm sure the Fly Sky like does as well. Um, usually you're just kind of like trying to optimize everything to work together as the perfect package. Okay. All right. I thought with the ESC settings, it was a lot, it was opening maybe some more doors with the radio settings as well. Yeah. Okay. That's more. Of I, thing, you I see, yeah. well, you see this in um in the drag racing scene, yeah. right? So I'm wondering if that's spill, spilling over because my buddy be out there tuning his ESC, his radio, all that type of stuff. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if that's starting to spill over into your world yet. Okay. Excellent. Go ahead, Max. Continue your okay. geeking up. 
So this is something I've spoken at least a few times on the podcast before. And uh, is some people were saying that, um, you know, the stock racing, it's bad because the motors are so expensive and all this tuning and so on. Uh, in Europe, when we run stock, we run 13.5 in two wheel drive and on four wheel drive, I believe, or sometimes they run 10.5 in yeah. four wheel drive. Um, so I kind of felt this would be the way to make stock maybe a, li a little bit more fair because then, you know, you wouldn't have to tune. But when I, when I made this point and all, I kind of realized that in reality, we are going going to go into a point where we have the modified class being the stock class. So we'd have, you know, that 13.5 and then like the current stock would be something like 17.5. So what's your take on this? Do you really believe that modified will in some sense go away and we'll go to, um, you know, a mixed turn amount uh, and have sort of um, the top class of modified? be some kind of a blinky uh, style car i don't think so i'm like i know at one point someone talked about like they were going to go to 13.5 or whatever but it modified it's like modified it's open you can run like what you want you, you could run a stock motor you could run a 13.5 like at the scotty's race i ran a 13.5 and open mod and finished eighth there was you know good amount of guys there the track was small enough. It's just most of the time, uh, all these guys aren't u utilizing the power for the tracks. Like running a 7.0 on a track that's small or running like a 5.5 five on carpet when the track's small. You can, u like only the top few percent, I feel like, are going to utilize the power that, you know, someone like me wouldn't be able to figure out like, how to figure, or someone like me driving wise wouldn't be able to figure out. Yeah, because I, I feel this has happened a little bit already in, in on-road because for the pan cars, uh, the FR has made a rule that the modified class is effectively 6.5 blinky. Yeah. And I think I think that's an interesting move. Obviously, there's a lot of critics because it kind of goes against a lot of the things. But what I'm, I'm thinking about is when you have uh, all this development going into a motor that's 17.5 or 13.5, do you feel it would fully translate to all the modified stuff? Or do you think that there would be a point where from a manufacturer standpoint, it would be better if everyone ran, you know, two, three different models? I'm like, I, I think it's good to have the option of mods still there. I'm like modified, still a big deal. Like there's guys who are making like they're living, racing, modified touring car, pan car off-road all that like fun stuff so i think i think modified in a way is still better than than like stock racing i'm like i'm sure stock racing pays more of the bills than selling mod motors does but from a manufacturer's like standpoint having a modified team of pro racers is still good and i believe as long as you have the means to fund pros and you know a stock team. Yeah. Okay. One one quick last question: Why do you run modified at the events uh, rather than stock? I've ran, I think, a different class at every event I've gone through like this year. I'm okay. like I ran mod four wheel at the first one, then I ran stock two wheel with the Raymond twins at trackside, and then I ran mod two wheel here. Um, I ran stock more at trackside to help the twins out. Uh, we had just gotten the B7, so like trying to figure some setup, some setup like stuff out, uh, like get them all dialed in. And then uh, I ran modified at this like last one because I'm like, I wanted to feel a little better about how I drove modified at Hobby Action after the Worlds. <laughs> so I was like, if I can like throw down a little bit and, you know, run a little bit and, uh, you know, make myself feel better, uh, then I will probably not race at many other events for like the rest of this year so i achieved my goal uh and uh yeah i feel a little better after the worlds for sure all right do you think uh we're gonna see you head over to the far east or anything like that for hobby wing uh i'm not going for hobby wing uh like i'm not going for hobby wing specifically but i'm going to australia in may for the australian Ooh. like carpet series Ooh, for Jared carpet. Met, yeah. 
Right. Are you going to venture up? Well, we'll, we'll talk. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll question you and Davey about the 2025 Australian offer at World Championships coming up. Uh, Max, anything you want to ask Geek Out on with Maddie before we bring in our second guest? No, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> let's, let's bring in the, the man of the moment. Yeah, the man of the moment. Below me, David Bata. Hello, David. Uh, How are you? Good. How's it going? You and uh, Maddie G, after, you know, after that Desert Classic win thing, you just moved on up like Jeff, George Jefferson. You got a grand yep. piano in the background there. Man, you and Matty G's house look exactly the same. Cookie cutter house. <laughs> yeah, we're neighbors. They got, you know, one of those uh, newly built neighborhoods. So we check yeah. every house looks the same. He's got the same piano ready. and everything. Yeah, ready for a nest. Uh, All right. Everything. Well, welcome to the show, Davey Bada. Thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Congratulations. Taking a two wheel drive win uh, at the Desert Classic this past weekend on Hobby Action. Great win for you. Uh, but it's been quite a few great performances for you. Over the last couple of months, I know Max has mentioned you, mentioned you a few times. Uh, I guess we always want to find out where are people from. So if you guys know David Bada is a, uh, I, I guess you're a SoCal native, a SoCal racer. Yeah. Uh, I don't really know your age and all that stuff. You'll tell us that in a minute. But you've been racing for a while. Uh, you made a lot of waves in the stock class. You did very good in the stock class. Recently, I was in the last two years, have moved up to mod. Even seen you venture out and do some. Uh, nitro racing, unlike somebody else in this group. Uh, and um, just generally over the last two years, maybe a little longer, hitting RC on a full scale, almost professional level. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, man. Yeah, um, my name's Davey. I'm 18. Uh, my dad, uh, my parents own a hobby shop up in uh, Richterville that mm-hmm. I uh, they opened up about 13 years ago. 13, 14 That's years ago. Coyote Hobbies for people that don't know. Yeah. We'll talk about that in a minute. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I really started only traveling when the Jibberell series, I think in 2015, was my first Jibberell race. And this went around all, all different services we were racing on. It's just kind of helped me kind of be able to drive on the other surfaces that I drive on now. So it's quite kind of, it a big factor. So were you five when you got into RC? Being as your parents have had a hobby shop for thirteen years. Uh yeah, I was I was five. Um I really didn't I used to just run around just throw rocks at people and Yeah, he used to, he used to get choked out by yeah. <laughs> by Mason Templeman at the track. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah so was so was your dad into RC first then? Then your dad was a racer. Yeah. Well my dad was part of like on the more on the bashing side he's he's mm-hmm. had a rc car since he was about nine years old he's 50 52 now 51 okay <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah he's a he's played a big factor in my uh my career so far so so you have a hobby shop you're young you're not really racing when did you start racing i guess when did you start uh um, getting the bit in your mouth to do some racing so i think about Maybe like twelve years old, I started. I started traveling the around doing the JBL series, um, racing rookie and tour drive short course. Um, I was running rookie the half, like the first half, and then I got glasses, and all of a sudden I'm like two seconds faster a lap. No way! <laughs> yeah, and then uh, glasses and the B six. Yeah, and the B six, and that that was mainly <laughs> what got. So I basically skipped over sportsman and went straight in the expert. I was racing that for a couple of years and um and then I switched to mod and then it was a few years for that and I was running that every day and uh saw Maddie was winning some races and I didn't really win a, any stock races yet so I was like maybe I should drop back down and try and uh get some wins under my belt before I try and uh do any more bigger races. Okay. When did you meet uh your Mexican counterpart? Right there, um, right when Coyote opened. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it's, it's been a while. So how old are you? How old are you, Matthew? Matthew? I was. Ten, I was. I'm 23. Okay, so you're you're younger than Max. So Max, you're gonna, you know, you're the second eldest. Oh, we're, I think. I think. What do you? I'm 23 too. Oh yeah, that's right. Unless you, 
Yeah, unless you uh, just had uh, your birthday this year, then you're. I, I did, yeah. I'm okay, double the age you. of all of you. Uh, <laughs> all right, so you was going up to Coyote Hobbies up there to race as well. You, you're the hotshot, Maddie G. Uh, I was, you, I was not. <laughs> I, I, it, me and Davey were racing, I think, novice together. Oh, they yeah. were just, just running around, throwing rocks, taking Mason's donuts, and, and getting, getting choked out. <laughs> Why did Mason Templeman choke you out? What did you do? He, he looks pretty he intense. Rocks. <laughs> you was throwing uh, rocks at his car? It wasn't even. No, it was at like a. I think IERC, they had like a little. Uh, tetherball court in the in the back and me and him were playing on it and tyler fester ate his donuts and <laughs> he thought it was me so. <laughs> yeah so. he fun. choked you out over donuts yes yeah. <laughs> the funny thing is all these guys are still all racing together now yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> fenster fenster uh you him all these guys all right so you decided to drop back down into stock racing. When was this around? Uh, how old were you? Uh, it was around 2017. So, yeah, I don't remember. Uh, Still young. Yeah, that was a long time ago. That was, what, yeah. seven years ago. So yeah. you was 11. <laughs> the so, bright then, age of 11. So age of my son. Yeah. And then... Uh, I won I won the Jabber L series in expert mm-hmm. and then I was traveling with Ron Scher at the time and he said I should try going up to an INS race. My first one in uh at uh, Missouri, I think. It was at uh St. Louis. St. Louis. At this Smack is the dirt race? Yeah. Oh, carpet. yeah. Okay. And we 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 won every like uh the whole Jabber L series, so we're like, Oh, this this shouldn't be, you know, too difficult. And I went up there and I was like in the B main. <laughs> so, Ooh, how did you feel about that? That's a big blow for people. Yeah, not too good. <laughs> but, That's a yeah, common was, thing. Uh, everybody, yeah. it, it's not just it's. It, it, I think it's everywhere in RC. Uh, big, big fish, little pond, right? And then when you get yeah. that big ocean, and you start swimming, there's some big fish out there. Yeah, we we had no idea how many fast guys were out back east. So, yeah, it was a learning experience for sure, but. Uh, I kept through it with the series, and I think I got one podium, and two drive I got second. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, yeah. When did things start to click? Because then you became a, like one of the top stock drivers as you, you drove on. Uh, I think you was he was near the end of his stock career, I would say, and then it was like you Schimmel, uh, these guys all battling it out in stock for quite some years as well. Tell us a little bit about that. So I think it was in 2020 when I when I uh, did my first Surf City. Mm-hmm. It was <laughs> everybody in stock. Matthew was there. Matthew smoked me in four wheel, but I think I I got best of them in two wheel. So that was that was probably my first big stock win was Surf City was uh, two mm-hmm. buggy, and um, yeah, from there we planned on doing nationals, but then COVID hit. Yeah, it kind of killed that. Um, 2021, I went, we went the nationals, me and Matt battle out again. He won both tool and four and I won truck and uh, <laughs> <laughs> he gets, he still makes fun of me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this, I was going to stay another year in stock, try and get the buggy wins, which I thought were the most important, but I was kind of tired of the stock game and uh, thought it was time to move up. What was what was get what was you getting tired of in the stock game really? I think what he got was... accused of cheating. I think every race that we oh, won. Right. <laughs> yeah, so I was I was kind of tired of that. I mean, people behind the scenes they know what the time we took to get our transmission like super free, mm-hmm. which was honestly a lot of it. Like you asked Matthew, we we told him all about it once I... once we were done, both done with stock. Yeah, um, his I... his dad indulged everything as soon as like we both stopped racing stock. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, so was yeah, your dad still working on your cars at this time, or was it you? Uh, that was him. I, I think, yeah, I didn't. I started working on my cars right after stock. I, I wanted to do everything. Uh, so, so pops everything. had some secret transmission oil that made your transmission so clean smooth. Yeah, like it would spin for like three minutes, like yeah. without. Probably some or secret anything. recipe or something. 
<laughs> yeah, so he would work he would work on it for hours and he's perfected it. I think the twins running now. Yeah. Um Doug, uh all, all almost a lot of stock drivers now. So top secret stock transmission sauce. Dave bought us tranny shop. Dave bought us <laughs> tranny shop. <laughs> <laughs> Transmission shop, all you <laughs> perverted people out there. Keep <laughs> stock tranny shop. Yeah, you're gonna get modified. So a different thing. These these two are worse than me and JQ on the podcast. No, that's funny. We're talking about transmissions. What are you talking about, Max? Where's your mind going? <laughs> Debbie's like trying to hold it in. Is like I can't laugh. I can't laugh. <laughs> His, his dad's got some secret sauce. Like, then you crush up 1,000 hazelnuts and grind all the oil out of there to make this secret ingredient to me. <laughs> Transmission sauce. Toothpaste. Toothpaste. That's, that's what it is, honestly. It's toothpaste. <laughs> See all this so, meat secret right there? All right, so when did you make the, the decision? Huh? Mm-hmm. On the gears? What about the bearings? You do shit you use down? crappy bearings. You break the transmission case in for like an hour with toothpaste going one one way, and then uh, you let it like sit there. You then clean all the toothpaste out, and you put good bearings back in. You go run it, and all of a sudden it's like magically faster. Wow, that's so dumb, but at the same time <laughs> so cool. I did it. I only did the toothpaste stuff when I ran stock. I didn't go like like drum on the either gears down like with what like Davey's dad like was doing because that was a lot of work <laughs> yeah I wouldn't be doing okay. that either I wouldn't even be doing the toothpaste stuff <laughs> um all right so when did you decide to after all the people giving you shit about cheating and all that stuff and the tranny shop and all that type of stuff <laughs> um when what year did you decide to jump up to uh mod uh that was I think yeah 2022 I think end of 2021 was my first mod race at Top Gun mm-hmm. Shimmer, SDR. You and Shimmel, I think, went up the same year, right? Same time. No, uh, he went Shimmel up the- right later. Yeah, it was me and Davey, and then it was then right. Shimmel won, and then, yeah. Okay, so Shimmel's been in my... Okay, I didn't realize that. All right. So tell us, uh, tell us one of the big, big... So did you... Okay, was Mod as, uh, as much of a rude awakening as it was when you went to that first INS race? Uh, I mean, when I switched to Mod, I... I kind of already had the speed to run with those guys. I mean, I was in stock. Some races, sometimes stock were, were even faster. So, like, when I switched to mod, I could hit the same lap times, but I couldn't do it the same lap as those guys, or, like, every lap as those guys. So that was, that was my problem for the past, like, couple of years. I'd have some moments of greatness there, and then I'd fall off, and then, yeah, and then, Started just practicing every day at my track, and uh, it kind of just consistently started to get better and better, and starting to beat some guys here and there. And then a couple right ra- now, two races now, I've beat them all at the same time. So that's right. You beat a, you beat a lot of fast class this weekend. Um, now coming from stock as a stock racer, how do you handle all the power that the mod and motors are putting on? Are you running the fastest motors? Are you like uh, have a motor that's less I'm powerful? I'm running a seven out. Okay. So, so what are what are what are most mod guys out there running right now? That. Seven out. Okay. So yeah, you 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 are on tap with everybody else. Yeah. So in stock, I I also ran a uh, lockout uh, slipper mm-hmm. touch, which kind of is like I don't know if you would say like turning off trash control or something, but that kind of. Yeah. Kind yeah, of, yeah I'm, kind of, I'm familiar with it. So. Are you familiar with it, Max? You look confused. No, I know. Have you have you ever tried that in in mod? Is it just like you? There's no point. He in pretty much did mod? this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this weekend I pretty much locked out my slipper, and I was I was pretty good. It was like How? it for me. It just I couldn't. It was hard to time the jumps for me, and then like I feel like the car was just lagging out of the corner. So I just I put in some different pads, and it, I was able to just uh, go around a lot better. Do you actually? That's a good question. Do you do you guys tune the slipper a lot? Is it like because I know in carpet it like doesn't really matter. You just make it so that your car doesn't wheelie, and then you're good. But I I bet on that kind of dirt you're running on. Uh, I think you're also running ball dips. Am I correct? Yeah. Yeah. So I feel the slipper is 
a very sensitive part. So can you like have how do you do you tune it a lot? What do you do with it? Like what kind of pads or do you just use standard like AE pads or whatever? Um I think they're they're like a, some prototype pads that my uh, my buddy uh, Sammy Moran gave me the try from. Um and they're like carbon they're like a carbon fiber type of material. So um I like usually usually I would uh, check the slipper every run, just make sure it doesn't uh so it slips a little, just pull up about an inch and then you're good to go. So I don't know how Maddie does it, but that's how usually I do it. Yeah, it's usually like just making sure that they don't like glaze over, especially like when you're checking yeah. it, like making sure that the the metal parts aren't get are getting like super hot, like in just 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 from checking it, because as soon as they as they start to get warm, it causes glazing and all that fun stuff. Yeah, yeah, because I think that's that that's like kind of interesting part of changing the mod, because you kind of have to go away from the lock. Like he that. always ran a lockout, and I never did. I was all against all that fun stuff. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but it's a, it's a little bit of weight, right? But it's yeah, it, it, it saves a good amount of weight. I just didn't like how he drives a lot smoother than I do, so I needed something to like band aid yeah. my broken trigger finger. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever like to David? Did you ever try? going to like a 10.5 or something like that in in two wheel drive kind of um, or did you just straight up go to the same as the other guys are running in modify i went straight to it which um i had i had a little trouble at first i was like i was going because my track had a lot of grip so it was like it was kind of easy there so i started traveling the ocrc like every day to try and on the looser stuff to try and get my finger a little bit dialed in and try and get my power tuned in and that helped a lot um, working with Tom because we both run R1. Um, so that helped a lot. Um, yeah. Tom is gone now. He doesn't live in SoCal anymore. Nope. Went back home. Went back home. Um, all right. So any more geeking out questions before we move on, Max? No. I, want, I wanted to I talk think, to... I think, I think we talk about... Um... The race, the big race. Oh, hold on, but I wanted to talk to him about Coyote Hobbies and oh yeah, his yeah, track yeah. and all that stuff. So you earn Coyote Hobbies up there in Victorville. It's a glue track, right? Completely sealed. Yeah. Now, do you guys glue it like? Are you crazy gluing it like they do at Hooser, who's spraying on glue in between heats and all that stuff? I got. I don't know if it's doing it between heats, but I've seen him do it. Um, we usually only glue at night. Mm -hmm. And. Or so we build the track, we run it, we run it a full week where it's how you just the normal dirt where it's wet, wet track clay. Mm -hmm. And um, that that's not very fun because there's a lot of mud and they see you're scraping a whole pound of mud off the bottom of the chassis every run. And so we tried to get away from that. So after the first week, we run it wet and then we glue it Saturday night, uh, Sunday and Monday. And then we open it Tuesday. And that and after, week? Yeah, and then after that, we usually only glue once a week on every Friday. How is the hobby shop going? Is it like a full-fledged hobby shop, like with RTRs and stuff inside and race uh, stuff? Or? We we mostly only sell tracks. This really, that's our best seller. I would assume so. It's like everybody's track and armor. Yeah. Do you do you get much? Do you work there? Uh, when I have to, yeah. I'm about to say, what do you do? You're 18, are you are you in school still? 18 years old or out of school? You out of school uh, or what? No, I'm out of school. I graduated uh, last year. What's your plans? Yeah, you but what's your plans? Um, I don't know. Pro my car racer. <laughs> my my dad says I had a couple years to try and uh, make some money at this, so mm -hmm. I think we're we're getting close. So yeah, well, Does I think. He, well, I think. I think you have a uh, at least quite a big promise going forward right now. Yeah, I gotta I try get the macro. So. Yeah, you did a little Who bit of macro racing last year. You gonna do any more yeah. this year? Yeah, intermediate. Um, I'm gonna try and hit nationals and uh, Silver State. Uh, okay, no DNC for him. Why not? Uh, I um. So last I'm time I was there, I, yeah, last time I was there, I was running the main, and I couldn't even feel my hands up there when like. 
at the halfway point of the race. So I was like, ah, we'll skip this race from now on. This goes to the <laughs> <laughs> this oh. is with the this is with the CC ten scale drivers can't even go outside. I, I have a question for you, Matty G. Um, being as you're a little older and got to know Davy as a younger kid, when did you start seeing that he had some talent and uh, could probably surpass your your skill level at some point? Yeah, when did you start noticing that. Uh, like, pro- mind, probably, like, I this answer. probably. Um, when we started like running like modified, um, he would always go faster than I would. And, uh, that's usually what did it for me. I'm like, I was always, uh, it's kind of like the two Raven twins. They compare each other. Like when they race, it was like, okay, if I can keep up with Davey, like I'm doing something right. And, uh, yeah, I definitely couldn't hang. Was you like proud at that moment? Like, I was pumped because I'm like, well, at least one of us like did it. So <laughs> <laughs> he could still do it. Oh good. Oh, I'm like, have you like have you like totally given up on that? Yeah, completely. <laughs> <laughs> I told Davey, I think I think it was at Hoosier. Like I was in the B main and both, and I'm like, dude, I can't keep doing this shit anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you I have a steady have job now. Yeah. In the industry, yeah. in the racing side of industry. Take um, it yeah. Do you have this kind of thing at the back of your mind? Like maybe if I get my setup right, I can do it at one race or something like that. I've definitely told Davey, I'm like, dude, if my car was good and if this was good, if that was good, like I could totally do something. But it's just like, what's the point? Like if I win one race or like podium at one race and modify it, like it's not going to change anything. I'm still happy with the job I have and stuff like that. And if I do it at one race, everyone's just probably going to say like, oh, like he got lucky like that time and oh, everything like went well. And then that's that's how I think. Yeah, it would go. yeah it's funny because I think we us two, we are kind of at the same point because there was a time where I kind of was like, I'll give myself two years, you know, and, uh, you know, I took two years off after school and obviously, well, COVID kind of fucked up my whole plan of like driving for two years. But anyway, I, I knew I always had those moments, like when I already realized that it's not going to happen. I had those moments where I'm like, oh, shit, like uh, my car is feeling really good. I'm good. Like, I, I think I can do something. But no, I, I, I think it's the best that attitude to have is like it's over because then you don't you don't have those moments of disappointment. Yeah. Well, like at Hobby Action, like this weekend, like I was telling Davey, I'm like, well, hopefully I can just make like the main. And then like the first qualifier, I was in third and then I like. Uh, there was left tra- there was traffic and i hit it and then the second the next qualifier i was in second like for a couple minutes and was like hmm like imagine if i like was fully invested in this but i would probably be doing way worse because i'd be tweaking out over yeah that's the time. thing yeah yeah i i know this too because when i when i go to the race and just like drive I'm like, oh shit, I can actually beat like uh, Peck or Yona or whoever like are actually really fast these days. But then when I'm like, oh, I need to practice for this race, I absolutely suck every time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Davey is Maddie G's Yuna and Pekko. Yeah. Yeah. I think like it's, we're on this side with uh, Maddie and then like you two, you two made it, you know, let's see, <laughs> you made it on podcasting. Or oh, whatever was your dream, and Davey, you made it in racing. <laughs> no, no, I'm talking about uh, in you're like the elder statesman of your little crew, you, yeah, 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 Paco, yeah. and you, well, he has his his dyad. The dyad is what we call him, the Levi twin, the the uh, sorry, Raymond twins, who we're going to yeah. talk about her shortly. And Davey is like his Yuna or Paco. You sitting there looking at him like, ha, ha, ha. I like how he created him. <laughs> <laughs> Like he came, he came from my he came from my loins. No way. <laughs> All right, um, let's segue into we into the race that you did very well at this past weekend. Uh, Davy Bada was at the Desert Classic, which uh, Max goes, "Hey, the Desert Classic is going on." I was like, "Yeah, I didn't even really wasn't paying attention myself this yeah. this past weekend." La- yeah, last week's podcast we said, "Oh, I don't, I think we have a free weekend. There's no races going on." Yeah. And then GITC and Desert Classic, two of the biggest races in the <laughs> 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 Uh 
uh, this happened at act, uh, Hobby Action in Arizona, where the 2023 World Championships were. Uh, it had a plethora of classes. Looked like a good turnout. We had all the pretty much all the top names in mod and missing a few in stock, but still a few top names. But definitely, I would say all the top names in in mod were there. Yeah, I, yeah I'm fan, sure. Yeah, Sontag, like, Rifkin, uh, no horn. No, so no horn, and then I don't know who else was was missing. But we had CFD. Just, just Tom run. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Tom, Tom Chase. Horn. Tom Chase and Horn were the three yeah. missing. I feel like. Okay. Don't so, they live in like Midwest or something? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Chase does not live in Quebec. Oh um, yeah. Where, where does he live? In Quebec. Wisconsin. Really? Oh, Wisconsin. <laughs> okay. Anyway, not in like West Coast. No, no, no. He is Midwest North. No. All right. So let's go to our notes about this race. Go ahead, Max. You can you can start geeking out on this. There's a classic. So this is a long race. Is this the old cactus classic? Or is it a whole I, know. I yeah. think the cactus it's... classic was like the big race that was always held in I think Arizona. Yeah, think it was Arizona. held at like SRS. Uh, yeah. And then w- when SRS closed and Hobby Action opened, like there was that, you know, that week was open for an event. And I think Larry and the crew decided to do the Desert Classic. Why isn't it called Cactus Classic? Because like, I, I think someone outdoors. has like the rights or whatever to the name. Okay, but Cactus Classic was outdoors first and then it went to SRS. So I. Well, Ooh. so so it was always at, at, at like SRS, but they had an outdoor track. Ah, then, okay. then they moved to the maybe. indoor track. Yeah. Okay, so maybe SRS has the name or whatever. So. Yeah. Well, they I even tried to charge it. people to watch it one time. Yeah, they charge. They tried charging people to like come in and watch all, and like you couldn't bring food in. That was all bad. I I remember like that year. My dad was like, "Yep, yeah, we're not going." <laughs> yeah, food like, is the that that's the last straw. <laughs> you can't, can't bring your food. <laughs> it's like going into the movie theater. All right. Yeah. Okay, so, but basically this is the same same weekend, yeah. same same place or same state at least. Yeah. I don't know if uh, if it's a similar location, but I think you know this was one of. The, I remember when I was a kid watching American ten scale racing. I always like Cactus Classic was the race. So yeah, big big event for sure. When did you guys get there? Uh, we got there on Wednesday, I think. All right. So what was the practice Thursday? So there was practice, practice on Wednesday, like open practice on Wednesday through um, Friday morning, and then into Friday morning it was seating. Or no, on Thursday it was seating too. Uh, how did they do an open practice? Hmm? How do yeah. they do their open practice? Uh, they usually just do it by uh, controlled controlled practice heats. So what, you go up for five minutes, then you go out and yeah. tell them Okay. Mm-hmm. So they don't have any, uh, no type of, all right, cool, cool, cool. See no the waiting in line? Yes, there's waiting in line. I'm yeah, sure. there's waiting in line. There's still? Really? Yes. Oh, that's, that's open practice. So, from in you, so it start. can you practice on Tuesday? Which is yes. That close? So the track was open Tuesday. Our, uh, Doug, Doug went on Tuesday. <laughs> Doug was smart. <laughs> Was it the same? So it was the same it, layout, right? Yeah, but the conditions were completely different. Yeah, he was running treads. When, yeah. Oh, wh- when did it? When does it open at the races like this? Does it open like the previous week or same week? How they do usually they do finish it? the layout like that Sunday, and then like tidy okay. everything up on Monday, and they open on Tuesday. So then everyone just goes there and does open practice for a week. No, yeah. you well, can. You can. We went Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Wednesday you didn't practice. You just went there. No. So we practiced there. on a. Uh... Yeah, but official practice is Thursday. Yeah, but but everyone was there on Wednesday. Yeah. Right. What's the yeah. difference between official and unofficial practice? Well, Tuesday was like, hey, I'm gonna show up to the track and just practice and pay my fees and practice. Nothing to do with the race at all. Yeah. Oh, so you you don't have to pay for track fees on Thursday and Friday? Well, it's, it's already it's a part, part of the race. race. It's okay, like official okay. practice. Dude, I'm just like amazed, you know. I'm a, a lot of practice. Yeah. Not but Doug Leverier went on Tuesday to practice. But the track was this not in the same conditions as it, the track was not in the same conditions as it was on Thursday. 
Yeah, obviously. That's kind of like going to PMB and then going to practice at 3 a.m. when the track's fucking soaked. I made that mistake once. <laughs> Fuck, I hate, hated that. I remember my e buggy was having some issues too. So it, it had a runaway, and that runaway issue was in the ESC. So I had an e buggy runaway. And then I remember there was this guy who marshaled my car. He was like going full speed in, in its roof. The guy flipped it over. It fucking ran into the back wall <laughs> at PMT. And I was fucking running through the track, all wet, my shoes fucked up. God, I hate it. Then the fucking car on its roof, spraying all the shit on me. I think I think that's where I realized how much I hated open practice too. It was kind of like... Uh, um, you know, a butterfly effect. If it wasn't open practice, that would have never happened. All right. I would have had a runaway on a normal practice run. So. Okay. Well, let's get we're, that was a great rant about open practice. Um, <laughs> let's get back. So, how are you guys feeling, David? Tell us how did you feel? Were you fast right off the bat? Um, yeah, and I think my four drive was like insane in practice, and my two drive right. was okay, it was around the bubble, and then. Yeah, I mean, it, like it just—it completely switched. Where I didn't—I didn't even touch my tool. And my folder was really good, and now I had. I can hear the chickens. <laughs> I heard the chickens. <laughs> I can hear the chickens. Who's got yeah, chickens? So... Me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have a chicken next door to me too. This <laughs> is wow. <laughs> find them. Um. Yeah. So my tutor was really good come seating, and then forward have just completely fell off the face of the earth. So. Yeah, what he's forgetting. What he's forgetting to say is that him and I both went out the last practice like session and everyone was doing like high 19s. And then I did like a 20 flat and was pumped. I'm like, okay, I'm on pace. Then Davey goes out there and does a 19 four. I saw him do it. And he was like, was my course really good, Matt? And I'm like, well, no shit. You did a 19 four and everyone's doing like 19 eights. So you was, you was dominating already in practice. Uh, it was I want to say that dominating because come seating everybody. I I kind I couldn't put three laps together in seating. You was hot. You was just keeping. You was sandbagging in seating. So you, <laughs> you didn't you show your full in seat. seating. Yeah, yeah. Um, tell mental, us about mental sandbagging. So how does how does this track? Here's a great thought. How does this track differ with it being sourced? You able, you're able to use sauce and whatever tie you want compared to how it developed at the Worlds. A uh, 100, 100 times better. Well, yeah. please, will you explain? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, at any other race that we had like been there prior to like the Worlds running JC tires and sauce, it just has like consistent grip. Like You know what you're going to get. Like As soon as racing comes and they start blowing it off, the grip's really good. And then... Usually, like last year when we ran the AK tires and no sauce at, at the at the one up like warm up race, and then at the uh, the Arizona like state champs that Davey and I did, the grip was pretty consistent with the AK tires. And then we went to the Worlds, and it was way different because because they couldn't run sauce. So so you're using the J Concepts tires. What compounds are you using? Uh, silver. silver and Aqua. What like the smooth? What are they called again? The um, smoothie twos. Smoothies. Was Cav yeah. was Cav out there on a TZO slick? I'm not sure. I heard I he's testing on TZO slicks. I think he was. He was. Mm-hmm. 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 They've been running them on my track. Yeah. Right. I heard Nick talk about that, and I know they're making a carpet track, carpet tire, as well. But obviously, J Concepts the tires to be on at this race. It's pretty much the tire to be on at any of these races nowadays. Who's Proline nowadays? Horn, Tater, Ooh. and Schimmel. Ooh. So you did have some Proline guys in there. Still hanging on. Still hanging on. All right. Um, going into qualifying, I assume qualifying was taking place on on the Friday. Uh, how did you feel about that going into qualifying? How many rounds of qualifying did they have? Uh, four. So they okay, had two so was on it- Friday. And two on Saturday. Where was you sitting after round two and two-wheel drive? Uh, so round one, I got third, and then round two, I got second. Oh, that's good. How about you, Matty G? Round one, I got a, I think a seven, and then round two, I got a five. 
Oh, so you wasn't too bad. Too, yeah, that was pretty good. That's pretty solid. It's pretty happy Friday night. How did Saturday go? Two sixes. <laughs> okay. And you, Davey? Uh, I got second and then like a five, I think. Okay. So where did you, so where did you guys end up starting in your finals? I started second. Eighth. Okay. So you're behind Rifkin. Uh, and you was way back on the pack, but you actually finished pretty good in one of the races I was watching. And you didn't make the final in, in four wheel drive. Did you run four wheel drive, Manny G? No, the uh, so the four wheel that I have was inherited by a, a small person. Okay, tell us a little bit about you guys, B7s, <laughs> how they come along. Oh, uh, it's talking about the dyads, the who I actually heard one of the interviews from one of them kids. He has a very deep voice. What, yeah. what is inherited by a small person? <laughs> his, the, his his protégés. Oh, the Raymond? Yes. Small. They're oh, about yeah. like yay tall. But he talks like this. Yeah, that's Levi. <laughs> he talks like this. You know, my car was dialed. He has a very deep voice for a 12-year-old. Oh, no, okay. uh, they're 13 now. Okay. So, All right. Go ahead, Maxi. David, you talked before that your four wheel was amazing, but you qualified seven. So what? What the hell happened? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know because um, I showed up and I was. I think I did an eighteen seven in practice, and I don't think I touched that for the rest of the racing. And um, yeah, so I I was freaking out. So I just threw on my full INS setup, which won the at finals and. That wasn't much better either, so I, I didn't know what was going on. I think Spencer was complaining about his four hundred two, but he still ended up winning. So, um, yeah, I okay. I, uh, I don't know if it was like tires or something, but yeah, it was weird. Did did the track change a lot during that event? Because I feel like you said, you know, Tuesday you're <laughs> on on threads, uh, Wednesday people out there. I bet like when people are running heats, uh, especially I notice it at nitro events. Like when the top heats run, the groove gets better and better. Um, um, did you did you have the heat uh, grip come up? Um, so the track like dried out a whole lot. So I think that might have played a factor into it. Um, so I think my tool the whole weekend I went every run I was on brand new tires, and for a while I tried it and it didn't seem to to help at all. So, yeah, it was it was it was weird. The track, the track. I think uh, Dustin ran Aquas on Sunday, and he said his car was light years better. So, okay, yeah, that's interesting. Um, about the track in general, how did you how did you like it? Was this similar to what you guys run at the uh, SDRC? Where do you run? You run? Oh yeah, you have your own track in Victorville. That's good. But do you run in SDRC as well? Um, I, I, every now and then I'll, I'll stop by SDRC and, uh, practice, but this is probably completely different from my track. I, um, yeah, it's complete, complete opposite. Um, and my track, it's really doesn't change at all. We could let it, let it sit for, for three weeks and I'll still run the same lap. And, um, so yeah, this one, this one is like, we showed up, it was kind of wet. And then by Sunday, it was like bone dry. Well, I haven't watched this main, but I realized why there was some squawking on the stand. <laughs> so what was there that happened? Can you can you uh, play it back? So right now we're watching two wheel drive A3 mm-hmm. and um, someone took Rivkin out. I don't know if it was you. <laughs> it was, it was oh, that, was, that was Brock. Oh, yeah. Okay, what happened to Brock? Do you guys know? Because he, he qualified third, but ended up dropping way back you beat him even uh, i think he's he started ninth and or he finished ninth in a1 and then 10th in a2 yeah because here a2. yeah here you get um i think oh, it was wait, right think, here yeah so brock brock uh you i think at this point you're already past uh Ripken and there oh no uh, that's that was brock <laughs> yeah yeah oh no no but you're already ahead right no, I so I was still oh, on the was, Yeah, so, so 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 Spencer's in first right now. Oh, that's you. <laughs> Who's that? That, that was that's Davy and Brock. <laughs> oh, so Brock took you out. Um, 
I don't know if it was a takeout, but it was like side to side. I was still on the inside. Okay. Oh, you took him out. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he was pretty upset, so. <laughs> okay, I guess I, I wasn't sure because it's um the video is a little bit choppy for us. At least was he uh, uh did he have some choice words for you in the driver stand? Uh yeah. But oh, uh, I'm, oh I'm sure he did. Yeah. So you cut that pipe. Mistake. Then he goes onto the outside of you, then you come on the inside. Ooh, ooh, that was close. That was close. I don't think it's that bad, to be honest. Like when that, I first saw the it, slow motion you know, of that makes it look like uh, the slow mo of uh, Dakota like hitting it makes it look. <laughs> I don't know. I, mean, honestly, I, th- I don't think you could have done much more. No, I don't think I right. could have done much. But yeah, when it starts to play right now, it's gonna look just the slow mo of the car flying. Yeah, I I was so far back, I didn't see any of this, but now I'm watching it for like the first time. I, I could oh, imagine oh. what Brock said to you at this point. <laughs> I don't know. To be honest, when I first saw it play in real time, I was like, oh shit, like someone took someone out. I thought it was the other way around because Brock's usually with the green body. Um, but yeah. But you ended up winning A3, right? Am I, yeah, am I that was, yeah. That was kind of like first lap gators for me. I. I like made like three mistakes that one lap. Like I could yeah. win this, and then I proceeded to hit the pipe four times. <laughs> okay, so two wheel drive. I think. Um, let me get the results here. So you, I think you win in A one. Yeah, second in A two. Third and, in um, A two. Third in A two. Oh yeah, sorry, third in A two. But yeah. Because right now, I think here, it's a situation where Bripkin has a one and a two. Mm-hmm. You have a one and a three. So what's going through your head at this point? You're battling the guy, AE number one driver and hobby wing number one driver. Um, and then, you know, you're here you know? like, hey, let me let me make my best mate happy. And uh, his boss sad at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, knew, I knew Cav had was the only guy that probably could have beat me overall or like for like second or, or, or maybe even first. So I knew it's as long as I beat him, I'd be either first or second. Yeah. And so that was my thinking. So I was like, I was just pushing hard here, trying to close the gap to Spencer because I saw Cav falling back. Did you feel like you had more pace all along? Cause um, from what I gather, you felt really comfortable with the tool drive. Yeah, I I didn't come come mains so after A one. I I I felt really confident I could um, possibly even beat him or race with them. So, what did you take it down, Keenan? We was just getting to the juicy bits. Because I saw the video that you wanted me to play in the other. No, 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 no! Don't play it now, because now we're seeing where Davey actually oh, wins. Right? You know what? <laughs> I probably lost it. Sick. Oh no! This is a professional podcast. <laughs> just, just uh, start it over and then play forward. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Talk, 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 you guys. Yeah. So, because I think you, you guys talk. I don't know if it was already it was on, but I think Maddie, you said that you had some difference in the setup. Um, uh, or like Davey had some difference in setup to Spencer. So what kind of things were you doing different? Why? What we all. Really I think Davey and I have always kind of ran our own thing. Like, like with his track, it's a lot easier to really tell what your car's doing because there's so much grip. That like when you come to hobby action, you're like, oh, like if my car feels like it's pretty good in practice, I don't really have to change much. So, yeah. Like with his stuff, it's it's usually different than what like Spencer or what like Dustin runs and the same thing like for me but Davy is far more talented than than I am so <laughs> <laughs> yeah um did you guys have like so you said you said Cavalieri was um was one that could be did you feel like who was the next fastest guys because obviously there was Brennan Schimmel who was in third after uh after the Rebkin 
So did you feel like he could have challenged you or like was there guys who had a lot of pace? Um, I know Schimmel had a lot of pace. Dakota had, had a lot of pace and also Brock. But I knew ap- after A1, A2, Brock, Brock probably wasn't going to podium. So yeah. I kind of, I kind of, I kind of just put in my mind that I just got to beat Cav and uh, yeah. try and fight with Spencer. Yeah. So now Keenan's um, got it back up. Um, and we can take a look because uh, you can, you can rewind it forwards a bit because I think Dave is going to make a mistake right about here. Yeah. So, yeah, so you, you actually you drop quite far back. So I was thinking because we saw you two uh, riding in, in um, behind each other uh, with, you know, like three minutes to go, uh, still a lot of time. But you're actually catching quite a bit here. Um, so you said you felt uh, really comfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, now Keenan's... Uh, well, Keenan's that, that track yeah. was really hard to stay consistent on. So yeah. I, in Q1, I think we everybody blew out, and um, yeah, I think I still got third. I think Spencer even had a bunch of crashes, um, and in the A3, it was kind of where we both crashed like two or three times. Yeah, because right now we're seeing, you know, um, Spencer. I think he catches uh, crashes out of the lead, uh, but going into the straight. Um, I think the camera kind of missed it. I don't know what's going on with the video. No, no, he made a mistake coming onto the straightaway. Yeah, so I'll show it. He can't. He made a mistake coming right onto the straightaway, and that allowed Davy by. Yeah, right there. So yeah, Rivkin's uh, Rivkin's in the lead. John oh, is in the five. And Bala, you're already in the lead. It. Okay, we missed it. Sorry. Continue. Yeah. So okay, now you're leading. I don't know if the, I haven't haven't watched the end now. <laughs> Before I probably should have done that. But do you do you feel nervous? Because you, I think you know you're gonna win. Right? Yeah. At this point, I'm. I was. I was. The nerves started coming up. Um, that table jump, I I start landing on top at the end because that was probably the most difficult part on the track. Um, yeah. So I think yeah I think. I'll start landing it here on top. But I was just trying to stay in the middle of the lane without uh, really getting too close to the pipe. Yeah. Yeah, there. Yeah, yeah you, you see, yeah, you jump. What was out. one of the more difficult parts of this track for you guys? That and you... the end of the straightaway. Oh, yeah. The, the... the single onto the into the triple. Yeah, do you feel like the, there's a big difference in layouts uh, at these other events? Because I saw, I can't remember if it was now the Clash, but they had these uh, painted, you know, curves on the track. Like, I think Those that's a big, di- yeah, I think a lot, that's a big difference, you know, in a lot of tracks, because these hobby action pipes look like you can't touch them at all. Your car will be flipping over. Is there a big difference in tracks uh, where you go to? Um, I mean, this one, it's kind of just where, uh, you kind of, you, some, you can even get over the pipe if you like stuff it, like you could kind of drive over it, but at like track side where like, sometimes you can't even see your car over the pipe because that pipe was a lot bigger. Yeah. Um, so you just got to be careful. And then if you hit that pipe at track side, it's kind of like where it'll just catch you and kind of just stick you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just looking. Yeah. Uh, ooh, man, people! Are, wow, uh, Rifkin made a lot of mistakes in this race. Yeah, yeah, I was looking at this. Like, he made a lot wow. of mistakes. <laughs> Matty G in the top five. He is in the top five. And just wait, oh, yeah. just wait, just wait. <laughs> is that you behind the Tater? Oh yeah, just wait. <laughs> are you gonna make a great pass, or are you gonna take yourself out? Let's see. Oh, Come just on. wait. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, they don't. They don't show it. I don't, I don't think I don't think they show it. Good. Well, right, well you're yeah. about to take your victory right here, Davy Bada. Take your probably your biggest win to date, I would say. Yeah. Was you was you nervous? Was you was you excited? I was I was really nervous. Um I think in the interview I could you hear me like staring <laughs> a little bit because I'm like just yeah, I couldn't even like really talk. 
I think INS INS uh when I won four oh I think was uh I wasn't as nervous because I knew not there I mean some of the top guys are there but not everybody was there. Mm-hmm. Race. How about you, Maddie G? Happy with your performance? Yeah. I'm like at the end of the day, it doesn't matter where I finish. I uh, I had some moments of greatness and was super pumped with that. I was more pumped for uh, the Raymond Twins and uh, Tyler Hooks. I run some, some hobby wing stuff in stock of five. Yeah. Hooks is running some hobby wing stuff for you. Uh-huh. Let's see. All right. I'm I'm going to play the end of the full A3 for four wheel drive where yeah. Tyler tries to make that jump, which I think he would have he wouldn't have got it even if he did it. So because he did cut the track, but I thought it was fun. So Tater yeah. and uh, Rifkin have a battle to the end here. And yeah. Tater almost takes the win here. Yeah, in, in, in full drive, it, it was interesting because, you know, Tater had a 10 and a 5, and then in the last minute, he's really closely battling, battling Rifkin. And, uh, yeah, now Champlin kind of has a good run and finishes second in full drive. Um, are we getting the jump soon? It's, uh, yeah, it's yeah, it'll be, be, be there at the end. Yeah. But I wanted to yeah. talk to you, Davey, so... You're, you're one of these younger racers coming up against some of these guys like Cavallari, uh, Rifkin. These are guys you would have been reading. Well, not you. You wouldn't have been reading them about about them in magazines because you probably weren't alive in magazines were on. But um, you know, people that you look up into the hobby that you know these are top names in our industry. Like we're looking at two of them now to go out there and beat these guys. Uh, what does that do for you as a young racer and your confidence and uh, going into your next race? <clears throat> Did you see that, um, Max? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Let's wind that back. Hold on. Go ahead. It was go cool. ahead. Uh, go ahead, uh, Davey. I mean, yeah, it's, um, it was cool because uh, I used to uh, watch Cavalry, Mayfield, and Spencer all ballot out when I was first started traveling. So it was cool to see that, you know, my dad, my dad, like a big fan of Mayfield. So, um, Really? Yeah, I raced with them. Yeah, and now you're beating Mayfield to an extent. Hey, you, well, maybe he's kind of like, race. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's look at this now. Yeah, this, this is, is actually a, pretty cool. Yeah, for anyone watching this uh, or listening this with an audio, Tater Sontag just absolutely shoots at the last double, so straight into the straightaway, and almost like he's already by the, um, Spencer, but. Spencer kind of powers by him. But that's mm-hmm. one of the most cool things I've seen in a while. Imagine if the line was earlier on the straight. Yeah, but I don't he think they would have given it to him. That, he was, That's a big track cut. He cut yeah, a big pile true. of track. But I mean, and, you can't prove it because he went over the pipe. You know, you can't yeah. say that, you know. In qualifying, they were calling that. They are giving out warnings for that. Oh, okay. So he was known before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so should, what, we, should we talk a little bit more about uh, four wheel drive now? We we looked we just looked at uh, that huge uh, finish thing, but uh, should we talk about the maze in general? Sure, go ahead. Yeah, um, how did it go? Well, obviously, Maddie, you was watching, so maybe you know. I mean, you'll know better than any of us. So, well, was there any big takeaways? Um, what do you think? Oh, but you got a top um, five in four wheel drive too, Davy. Not bad, not bad. From not a- the four wheel racing, it was. Uh, I don't know. I, I was sitting there charging batteries like the whole time. So it was hard like for me okay. to like kind of watch because we're like trying to time like the cycle and it, like, all that stuff. And then like after the twins are done running, like I'm running and grabbing their cars. So um, the only main I really watched was a one and a three when Dakota or when uh, Tater and Spencer like were going at it or it might've been like Tater and Brock. Uh, in A1 when Tater's uh, opinion like slips and fell off. Um, they were both going at it good. I'm like, A1 was, I think, the most interesting race of the entire like weekend as far as like passing and cars flying and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that one, Brock took the win uh, with Dustin Evans actually uh, taking a second, which yeah. helped him to put uh, to podium overall. Yeah. What do you guys? What's your guys' take on Dustin Evans? Obviously, both of your teammates uh, through Associated, but he's kind of one of those guys who sometimes looks like he's too Tough old. And some, sometimes he's like on the podium. So what, what, he's kind of got a fucking third. 
Like, if you would have told me Dustin Evans would have gone third at this race, I would have said, no way, shut the front door. Yeah, yeah. Well, what do you guys think? Um, I think Dustin's pretty cool. You know, he helps me a lot at these races. Um, yeah. I pitted with them at this race. Uh, we kind of uh, shared some ideas on setup, too, and, you know. He's, he's, he's always like super mellow and like helpful. Like, yeah. like even though he's not like up there, like sometimes he, he's still probably one of the most like knowledgeable guys on the associated team when it comes to setup or yeah. tire stuff. So and he can still wheel. So and he can still wheel. <laughs> yeah, that that's because I see for sure since he moved to associated. Okay, yeah, he won the redo race with associated, but after that, I think he's kind of move much more to um like a helping or managerial role uh in associated but i think it's crazy how he can still have these results because you know even mayfield he's a really good driver but he hasn't had these results in 10 scale for a while and i think it's quite impressive that like dustin is still there even though Mm -hmm. you know uh all that you know who didn't have a good weekend dakota fan a seventh, yeah. And where did I wrote it in? even. I wrote it even in my notes that um, the code fan all the way down in seventh in four wheel drive and even two wheel drive. Yeah, he was fourth, and like David said, he had speed. But I think still, there was a time where it didn't matter if it was eight scale or ten scale. Fan was all, always winning. But now we're kind of way past that. I think um, what I wrote in my notes. I think. With Rivkin, Keekwing, and winning four-wheel drive, and Keekwing, and finishing second in two-wheel drive, and all the results he's had through the past year, considering the worlds and everything, I think Rivkin is right now like the like definite number one name in America in intense scale. Like if you look at overall, obviously, like you have like guys like uh, Davy, and then um, Taylor obviously had the worlds and and stuff like that. But Rivkin consistently, I think, is the number one. Which Fend hasn't kept up uh, in ten scale. In eight scale, he's yeah good, but I think that dynamic has changed a little bit. What do you think? You know, I actually think that's a good observation. Um, it, it's kind of silently been happening. Uh, Taylor yeah. has Taylor hasn't kind of really done much since the World Championships, but uh, Rivkin has been kind of steadily there on a podium, winning or on a podium. So yeah. I would I would agree with you there. Uh, top guy on Associated right now. I would argue to say that maybe David Bada that 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 win bumps you yeah. up to probably number two position. Some in ten scale in America, no pressure. Maybe, maybe Horn. Horn still. Um, yeah, but I haven't seen Horn race for quite some time, so not sure what's going on there. But definitely a scrap, a scrappy little thing going there at Associated uh, with these young guys, and then of course the, all the young guys over in Europe as well. Oh yeah, Kara, Fiona, Tommy, the Hall brothers. Um, mm. Yeah, there's so like Associated has so many fast ten skill drivers. I think there are gonna be quite a bit of people who are gonna be looking for a job. So he <laughs> has some competition for sure. <laughs> Good weekend for Shimmel too. Second, uh, yeah. he sorry he got a third in two wheel drive yeah. buggy. He'd be happy with that. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit of stock. I know you need to talk about it. Yeah, your boys, they did pretty good this weekend. Uh good buddy. Let's see. Um yeah. Raymond Raymond Brothers both and a Levi who which so who, Levi is the one with the deeper voice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he takes the win in uh in thirteen four in thirteen five four wheel drive. He gets a one one, he does it in two. His brother came his brother came third. So yeah, these young yeah. these young guys are starting to really do well outside of San Diego now, especially on dirt. Like, if it's dirt, they're going to be good. Uh, but there's so much carpet racing coming out. Are we going to see them run a little bit more carpet? You guys don't have much carpet in SoCal. Yeah, there's two tracks. Uh, there's a track that's an hour, like, for me. Uh, and then mm-hmm. there's another track that's three hours. Um, it's just I don't have any time <laughs> to go mm-hmm. and, like, sit and try to run a full flooded, like, carpet-like program. And then, you know, focus on all this stuff, like, for dirt. Oh. Ethan Hoskins, who's that? He is a, yeah. a factory tracks driver. He he's always been really fast. Usually mm-hmm. just uh, just crashes, and this weekend he everything came together. He beat up on them, boy. He beat up yeah. on the very A. Sammy Moran, yeah, Levi and Chase in fifth. Tyler Hooks in sixth. 
Jermaine Robinson making the trip over from uh, yep. eight scale. Is he going to be doing much more 10 scale racing? Yeah. Yeah. So he, he's down at SDRC like every week. And uh, we had Mason Fuller on the, her last weekend. They are going to be doing a lot more racing. Uh, we saw that Camden Lawn was there. What, what, what's up with them? S Works uh, AE mix, mixed up two wheel drive cars that they're running because they do run a lot of AE parts on them for the dirt. They do? I didn't know. Yes. Don't put put your faith head over there. They do. They run because they don't have a dirt car. They run primarily on carpet over there. Yeah. So they're running a lot of associated stuff. Look at them. They're all smart. I didn't know it's true. Oh, Tim Lime's (laughs) going to be mad at me. We ain't running no associated stuff. I remember one time, one time he was on. HB Hubs. You run the the HB Hubs. I, I I said, like, are you guys still running the HP hubs? And it was, oh, we only ran them for two events. We only ran them for two events. Then we figure out something better. So I think that's a weak spot, weak spot for them. So going on, yeah, it was good. Weekend was good. Everything went well. <laughs> well we can't talk about the SRX and 8 associated parts. That I'm like not that. talking about it. Uh, but can oh, so there's actually that. some some beef there. Oh, not beef, but some uh, some spicy things there. I'm, I just don't want to get in. I don't want to. After the whole tire thing at the Worlds, I don't want to do I have that. a question for you. Oh, boy. I have a question for you. We need to talk about it, but Cavs out there are still fucking making top fives and battling. And He's wild. There, He's the guy. Right? Right? How long, how long is it before Cav is all X-ray next year? I don't think it will be. <laughs> they already Man, have a lot of guys. That's that's the thing. They don't have anybody that. And you know yeah, what? Who? Cav can beat all those guys right now. Who and do Jay they have in that scale? But Jason Lee and Tom Rendenick. Yeah, but they America. weren't here. They weren't here. They don't have anyone. They got in West like Coast. Bruno, and they got they're paying a lot of people. They don't have no top no, but, American guys. No, but Bruno is like touring guy. Yeah. Bruno is for touring. Um, Ron Falk is for everything. <laughs> So they need someone who does like Tensco. I'm, I'm shocked that, that that Ronald Falk hasn't came and done any off road races like over here yet. But he just got he just he did he came over and did the Florida Copper Championships. Yeah, but that was last yeah. year. Yeah, well, I mean he's, he's, he's only started. He's going, to, he's going to DNC, so I think that's why he doesn't come to this race. Okay, um, so yeah, as we went through stock, Levi Raymond, uh, Doug Levier, Chase Raymond in four drive spec. Uh, your boys making the podium, and then two-wheel drive. Ethan Hoskins, as we went through, with Doug, 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 has, Doug has like two twos, no wins, but I mean solid runs. Who is Sammy Moran? I have no idea. Another top um, stock guy. Well, yeah, he's a. Uh, me and him grew up together uh, around my area. We go. We uh. He started coming about like two years after we opened. Okay, so okay, let's do a test here. I'm gonna list out names. Uh, from the stock or spec tool drive main, and you say if they are from your area in SoCal or if they're not. Ethan Hoskins. No. Nope. Midwest. Doug, Lav- Doug uh, Larivier. Yeah. yeah. NorCal. Yeah. yeah. Nor-Cal. He's like honorary. Yes. Sammy but he traveled a lot. Yeah. yeah. Same. Well, the Raymond brothers both are. Hooks is from Florida, so he's not. Mm-hmm. Uh, then Aaron Jensen. That's Arizona. What about Jeremy Robinson? Yeah. That's California. And though then there's uh what the fuck? This guy's name is Matthew Willibilly. California. So Arizona. he's from California, but he lives in Arizona now. Okay, but basically half of the main is from like your your area. Well, what this is a race there? out there in the West Coast. True. Okay, true. Or Mr. Mason. Yeah. <laughs> that's your, that's Templeman's on the talk? comeback tour. Yeah, Templeman's Where on was the comeback Mason? tour. Yeah, well, what is what is he doing? Well, um, it's Davy's fault. Davy, did you put him into retirement? No. <laughs> you you know. choked him out. Did you eat his <laughs> donuts? Yeah, I ripped his pants. <laughs> <laughs> so there is a video floating around the World Wide Web of Davy at Desert Classic like last year getting pants. So I because think that of means that, like his pants pulled on. Yes. So because of people. that, Davy gave Davy paid him back because he 
pantsed him again at another race, and Davey just grabbed his back pocket and ripped the pants like all the way down. So you and you and Mason Templeman have a long history of violence towards. Well, what 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 with this thing? You just, yeah, we need to yeah. get um, we need to get a UFC ring. Put this for in you the and Mason. <laughs> he hasn't he hasn't done anything in a while since I've done that. So yeah, <laughs> he's been pretty good. <laughs> violence makes my tummy tingle. <laughs> All right. Um, that's a, from a show that's coming out. I was watching it. It's a Disney show. Okay. What, one more question. Of these guys who were running in stock, uh, obviously you're going to talk up your uh, Raymond brothers, but who do you think are going to be the next uh, stock? Uh, like the guy who makes it out from stock like Davey has? Probably the twins. Probably them. Yeah, I would say the twins. Because I, no, no. I don't see no, Dr. No. Verrier coming out of stock, and I don't see Sam and Moran coming out of stock. These two are kind of just like. Well, they're forever. so young. That's that's the thing Doug? that they have on their side. No, no, no. I'm saying that Sammy's the twins 20. are so young. Sammy's oh yeah, 22. that's what I mean. The problem is Sammy. Sammy works, so he can't come practice. Yeah. Mm. So he's just yeah. running for fun, stock for fun. What stock about this Ethan Ethan Hoskins guy? I've never heard of him. I heard of these so, other guys, but not that one. So he's uh he's been at a couple events for the past like few years. He drives good. Okay. I've probably but seen him at like, a race then. Is he like a young guy? Yeah, he's 16. Okay. Okay. So you got you got a good amount of people going over there in Tensco, I'd say. Well, that brings me up to a very good question. Um, with OCRC and I'll be in close for quite some time, I just added Ethan Hoskins as a friend. <clears throat> uh, we still have San Diego going strong. Why are you laughing, Max? Because I had to go see who he was. So I've looked him up. I love Facebook. how you was like, that's a OCRC is going down, and you added a Facebook friend. Those are kind of like the same, <laughs> same level of information. <laughs> well, I was just doing it at the same time. Uh, because Dave is getting bored, and Matty G is losing uh, time, and we're going to wrap this up. Uh, what is what is uh, 10 scale looking like in SoCal, California, Arizona right now? Because, you know, it te- uh, 8 scale is booming right now. I would but say it's like- more of the the thing going on in California. Uh, like Davies track gets a good amount of pull, like an entries, mm-hmm. especially ever yeah. since they put the oval in, I think. Like that kind of helps like way or way in more racers to, you know, I like go over there and especially with uh, them doing the glue thing. That was mm-hmm. kind of one of like the, I would say not negatives of going to Coyote, but it's more, it's easier to, to go there when you don't have to clean your car every run. And I'm, I think Davey can attest to that. Yeah, we were like sure. spraying, spraying like WD-40 and SC-1 on the chassis so it wouldn't get all mudded up, but it would still happen. But yeah, it was not fun before we glued. Well, that's good. What about, what about carpet then? Because I see <laughs> East Coast, there aren't many dirt tracks left. Almost all the, you know, tracks... Uh, the biggest know, thing, Cali, is the overhead. Like like the overhead to have a building to rent a big enough space like how Hobby Action has it or like most of those like Midwest tracks have a good enough, you know, space to do a, a pretty big track. The overhead's a lot cheaper over there. Than Semi-permanent, there. dude. Semi-permanent yeah. carpet tracks like in Europe. Let's go. Maybe maybe you, you should do because um, – in Europe, we do this a lot where we rent out like a sports hall or whatever, and then you build a track there. Like, I don't know yeah. if you watched uh, the European Championship warm up race, because this year they're going to have uh, the European Championships for 10 scale uh, on a fully, you know, sports hall, build a track there, hold it over the week, and that's it. So You're talking to just, guys who like dirt racing early. Is it, but that's, that's where I was coming to next. Like, do you think that's going to be a thing in your area? Because I see. I see dirt racing think, dying. Yeah, yeah. Well, any, anywhere else except for Southern California, I see like other st- style racing picking up. I shouldn't say that. I see dirt racing being. It's starting to be very few and far between. Right, you still have a few good yeah. dirt tracks left. I think that's going to get less and less as carpet's just much more accessible, more yeah. available. I mean, as we're we're, we're talking to having that that British GP over in the UK, which is in the mall. Yeah. 
What yeah. are your thoughts on the whole dark future and all that type of stuff? Um, I don't know. I mean, um, our track's been doing really good recently. Mm-hmm. I think we're averaging like every every Saturday. I think at least a hundred entries. So, and uh, obviously the oval helps with that, but it's like it's only another extra like twenty thirty entries. So we're still off road seventy. And then our series. But you guys live in an area where dirt is still very popular. Yeah, but we we're like, I'm like at a top like we call it the high desert. So a lot of the like uh, guys at the bottom of the hill don't really like to drive up. So they only come really on our street. Maddie's, one. <laughs> but but he drives past me to go to Rain Man. So you know, because <laughs> the look at that because the honor of worlds is there. Competitive track that's farther than the one of your friends. No. It's because the touring car worlds has been there, and the touring car track and the off road track are ten minutes apart. So it's he went convenient. Oval at, at their track, but he won't come over on my track. <laughs> <laughs> what happens when you get in houses think, like that, right? Yeah, you I think I think people. Yeah, you <laughs> you forget you forget about where you came from. So I think I think we need to book a uh, couples therapy for you two. Uh, so you think we can hash this hash this out? Um, but you can, you guys just like know because I I, th- I see kind of the fact that you're really close to being on carpet. You have the glue tracks, you have all that kind of stuff. So the give of see- dirt is ten times better than like the slot car one line stuff that carpet yeah. has. I think. Yeah, yeah, I think, I, but that's in, that's an interesting topic to speak because in in Europe we kind of never had anything better, so we just had, you know, at, well, at one point we had anything you could find from a fucking dump dump yard type surfaces. We had like five different surfaces on one track. That was like the norm for us Europeans. You'd had, you know, uh, plastic floors, you had astroturf, you had carpet, you had tile floors, all that kind of stuff, all put in one track. But in America, I think the change has been more of so of everyone ran dirt outdoors, then everyone ran like clay indoors, then now everyone's running, almost everyone's running like glue tracks indoors. And at the same time, when people are moving out of dirt, they move to carpet. So I think it'll be interesting to see because it could be a thing where, you know, California is the only place where you have this like clay track or glue clay track, whichever it will be in the future. And then everywhere else will be like carpet. Yeah. Do you see that happening? I don't know. Like, I feel like Coyote's doing good. Like SDRC is doing a lot better now. Um, to call it the only real dirt off-road track we have in California is, is a hot fucking rod. hot rod. And then yeah. there's a uh, the Dirt Junior, but that's only there like temporarily. Yeah. And then um, after that, it's like the SoCal. I don't. I feel it isn't the mecca of RC anymore. It's more of the Midwest, like for sure. Yeah. Well, concerned. Midwest has uh, the Plex, right? Um, yeah. I think that place I think is badass. Is, yeah. I'll tell you where where RC is booming right now. It's in Florida, ten yeah. scale and and eight scale. Uh. Real quick, uh, so next for both of you, 10 scale Dart Nationals? Uh, we'll be at RC1. RC1. Is it the same weekend? No. So no what Dart Nationals it? for you guys. Like two weeks before? So you guys are, hold on, hold on, hold on, rewind, hold on, hold on. Dart specialists, but not going to the Dart Nationals. No, so we're going uh, to, to Dart Nats. There's yeah. a carpet race next two weeks, I think, right? Yeah. Right. Right. That's what I meant. You get to the Dart Nationals in, in April. April. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Cool. And uh, all right. Um, 2025 is coming up. I know you said that you're going off to Australia to do carpet racing of all things. Not- yeah. What the hell? Yeah. Australia is like the last place on this earth where people run outdoor 10 scales. So, so uh, what the fuck? Why Jared are Met, going there? So Jared Met and his dad are doing a carpet series mm-hmm. and they're putting like a race together at a venue and all this like fun stuff. So I'm going to, uh, you know, okay. support, like my buddy 
you know. Okay, but you, Jerry, I Matt. don't know which area is it. Australia is huge, Max. Australia is yeah, yeah, huge. But I'm, that's what I'm. I asking. just know it's a place that was in Nemo, Sydney, Sydney, right? The for Finding Nemo, you know, the fish yeah. that you know. Yeah, I, I don't think. Yeah, this guy's geography is this guy's geography is based on a Disney cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All but right. I but think, my thoughts you know, is what do you guys think about the upcoming world yeah. championships being on that outdoor, untreated, yeah. packed surface where you're gonna have to run fucking pin tires and I know, you so know it's gonna, get gonna be coming over to Sorchi's house, redoing some testing at that Sorchi's backyard. <laughs> Well, you would want to because that's the type of surface that you're probably yeah. going to be running on. Just, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, the JRL series kind of helped me with that because I even ran the outdoor rounds, which, I mean... Where uh, did they run the eight outdoor rounds for JBRL? Hot Rod and Rouse? Hot Camarillo. Rod, Camarillo, uh, CCR. CCR. Like CCR was Sugar, though, so I don't... That Where really is CCR? Count. Sugar doesn't count. Sugar uh, is like... Float. Are they close, huh? So it was, uh, it was, uh, a Eddie's, Eddie's like backyard track, and it was badass. But he mm-hmm. no longer wanted all of us in his backyard. Yeah, you've, you've, RC hooligans <laughs> don't know how to act. Spoiled you guys out. Yeah. Throwing rocks and choking our friends out. And <laughs> you know, ripping each other's to. pants. Like RC nerds going wild. Yeah, Matt. Yeah, look at him. He says, Yeah, Matt, like you, you are the main. Co- Conspirator for all of that track being closed to public to the public now. It was me, for sure. <laughs> okay, a few more questions. I still have a few more questions. Then we're closing in on two hours, and we have to stop with this um, shenanigans between us four. But I have to touch on the elephant in the room. We kind of touched on it before, but um, Davy made it out of stock. Maddie. I have to say, you didn't. You know, no man, man overboard. You know, man didn't make it. I tried. So, it was it was an honest effort, man. Yeah. So this past week, I, I I tried to pull the comments up, but there was some post about talking about stock and um and well stock classes in general, like how they grow bad habits and well, it was started on uh, the so R one works made a three geared transmission for the B seven. And oh, the whole, yeah, yeah, the whole right. comment section started like it was a mutiny. Yeah, yeah. So I think I read Tebow's comments, and he he was very vocal. I I don't know if he's talked about this before, but he has. He, was he very talked, vocal. Yeah, he talked on an Australian like podcast about how stock racing like ruined my chances at a. He said it ruined Matthew Gonzalez uh, doing anything past his stock prime. Yeah, so so now looking at this, I kind of like because personally when I read those comments before even talking to you now and all that stuff, uh I was like I don't I don't think that's true because a- everyone in touring does that um you know it's it's very normal for kids also to start out with you know motors that don't have that much power anyway. I guess yeah, it's a bit different, but Brendan Schimmel in, in the pond the podium, now David wins the race. A lot of these top guys, I think even Chase Lemieux, I think he's uh been a star no. guy for a while. He wasn't? He, he was wasn't, no. month. okay. Yeah. But anyway, there's a lot of guys now who have made the step. So yeah, what's your what's your take on that? Um, I feel like it sounds like a huge excuse, I guess, but um, I had, I, I moved out of my house at 20 or whatever, or, or 19. So like having to like try to make a career out of this, pay bills, try to like eat and all that stuff, uh, may have put a strain on whatever I had going on, but at the end of the day, I just didn't have it. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I think, I think that's also like, what many people don't really understand is that I don't think I don't think we're kind of at the level where you know you can really work it out uh, if you do all the right decisions. I think it's kind of eighty percent talent, and then the rest twenty percent is you know yeah. having 
enough time to do it. Um, you know, for example, Pavidis, he, he was doing really well. Um, he made the um, Nats main, all that kind of stuff. Then he, you know, go went to college and obviously he's gone a lot downhill since. Yeah, he, he had issues with other things. I feel I kind of went on that same boat. Had I was working through all the time when I was uh, still racing at one point. And it, I don't really believe that there's, you know, drivers shouldn't run stock or whatever. I think it's just that some guys have it, some guys don't. Yeah. But I think stock can kind of mask that. You can be good at stock even if you aren't the best uh, in talent wise. I think that's yeah. kind of like what Drake has also talked about that he always felt he was really good at, you know, setup, all this kind of stuff, but he really didn't have the talent. I don't know if I agree with him specifically, but for sure there are lots of drivers like that. I'd say Joseph is one of those guys who is really, you know, over delivered uh, relative to his talent because he drives like a fucking grandpa, but still he has had some actually good results uh, yeah. at some point of his career. So yeah, I just kind of uh, thought that it would be because I, I don't think it's good to encourage people to go to mod too early. And then when you don't have those results, it discourages you. Because I think it's like there's a point why you know racers in in motorsports go to lower classes before they go to top one. Right. So and I think I think there's no difference in RC. It is very discouraging, right? And when you're the, you you stock you stock master and you come up to that mod classes, yeah, the increments are so hard and the money is so hard to make, right? That's where yeah, the money yeah. comes in in stock. So I understand it. I've, I've I've come to appreciate stock, and 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 I enjoy it. You know, getting to know the stock guys that race and see, can you see the competition that's in them, and then the drama that comes. But you guys never answered my question. Hmm. Thoughts on the oh, world okay. being outdoors? Oh yeah, <laughs> the Sochi's um, track. It's going to be the practice track. Yeah, but do you think this is going to be? Do you think this is going to be one of our last? No, ten scale off road worlds where we see on this type of surface. I mean, I I don't I don't mind it. I mean, I I'm like I think I it's good that that it's on different like surfaces. I'm like it it helps you know show that there's value. Yeah, but this is a surface neither of you even race on anymore. Well, so I mean, it kind of it kind of equalizes days. everything too. I think. Yeah. I uh, yeah I, I actually think, agree with that yeah because. Yatabi World, you know, they was on European style Astro on, you know, uh, purpose built track. Then the last worlds that was kind of free for all because it was slicks and unsauced, so nobody knew what to do. Yeah. Really. Obviously, Americans had some form of advantage because the track style, the dirt, and so on, but they, yeah, it's not the same. But I think there hasn't like 2017 worlds. They used sweet tires, super softs, on a track that used the sugar or molasses or both. And the track was an eight scale track and the jumps were run on both directions. Yeah. So like since the worlds in, I'd say like Vasa, Finland in 2011, there hasn't been a track like it is going to be in Australia. Mm -hmm. Even in 2013, the worlds went in sugar track um, in A main in Chico. So it, it's like every world has some like thing to it that is. They're all different. Yeah, it's yeah. it's nothing like what I think. That's what's good about the worlds too, because it honestly equalizes everything for everybody. Like the worlds at Hobby Action was slicks and no sauce. So like the you can say the Americans had an advantage, but honestly, it, it was a lot different to drive on. And then mm -hmm. like the the Finland worlds or, or no, not the the Finland one, but. The Huddy uh, Arena, like it was mm -hmm. won by, yeah. it, it was won by Spencer. You know what I mean on on a surface that we don't run on, at all. Yeah. So I think it just kind of like equalizes and shows like who's got the, the talent at the very end of the day. Well, I'm looking yeah. forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. That that should be good too. Looking forward to seeing the the results from that. Uh, I guess I just wanted to say we're gonna ra rally. Uh, probably rally this up. Congratulations, Davey. First Thank big bin on two wheel drive, getting up there, doing well. Good job to you. Uh, good luck in your upcoming races, especially at the Dark Nationals. Maddie G, good luck. 
and congratulations with your new position at Hobby Wing. You look a lot more relaxed, a lot more uh, in tuned and doing something. A perfect example of turning your passion into a livelihood. And it's all, and a lot of it's because of stock. So we're going to have you on her some more as well uh, throughout the year. Davey, kick ass. Max, any more questions before we uh, wrap this up? I have, I have one really important one. Because this is something that it's really difficult to be a pro driver just running pen scale. And in America, there isn't an on-road. Well, I, I, I said it was hot, the on-road scene, a few podcasts ago. So I guess there's maybe an on-road scene in America. But, yeah, but not, what not what you're thinking. Not what you're thinking. Not what you're thinking. I know, I know what I know, you know, it's, it, I, th- I think I know how the American on road scene is, dude. <laughs> so, for well, both I mean, of what you you're guys, thinking is that it's big enough where it supports another. Like, no, 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 I, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I know, yeah. I know, I know what you mean. Yeah, and I agree. It's not. So, when are you two going to go into eight scale? Uh, Danny uh, raced the nationals last year. This I'm, guy. Down I'm there to my gonna try and maybe uh, next year probably hit a lot more races, but this year I only plan on hitting two. <laughs> Actually, at this race, Spencer told me that I should run intermediate. <laughs> he told Doug run. he should run sportsman. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> it was funny, but you got so mad that you beat him afterwards. So <laughs> you showed you showed him. But oh, what you what you guys got close is a skill track. Paris, uh, Paris and done the rally. But do you like? Do you plan to just go to these races? Are you actually going to practice for them and prepare, or um, like probably probably next year I'll probably start practicing a lot more. Let's go. For me, I I kind of the ranching part. I kind of don't know what I'm doing a whole lot of the time. I feel like I do a good job, and then I like my car falls apart. <laughs> you need to call Wally. Isn't Wally in your area? Shouldn't you guys? He, he, he lives practice? like right next to him. Yeah, why don't you just call Wally and like let him do your car? You can be his top team driver. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. He said I could come over to his track and uh, do some tests in there. So Dude, you should, because because he he's he knows how to set up and well uh, maybe not set up, but he knows how to maintain an eight scale car. Yeah, because I think like because I really see that it's really difficult to make it into pro, but there's not many guys who can. What? How old was you? Eighteen. Eighteen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so now is kind of the time to make it or break it. So you gotta you gotta expand your field. And touring in America, don't do that. Don't even try. So that's not oh, gonna yeah. pay you. <laughs> Maddie's Maddie's uh, waving his finger or looking frustrated with this discussion. He's doing touring car. He's rejuvenated his career as a on road. Oh, racer. you're running. You're running on road. Uh, I I went and ran some. I did some uh, motor testing in touring car a couple of weeks ago. Motor testing. Okay. 13.5? Hmm? 13.5? Both. Oh, 17.5. Both. And do, do you run, do you run uh, modified too in Tori? No, I'm like, I was just making sure that uh, some stuff that's uh, coming. Works. Do yeah. you run? Okay, this is uh, I, more questions. This happened last podcast too, but Keenan just l- let it be. Do you run the same same motors in on road and off road? Is there a big difference between the two in stock? In stock, the same stuff. Same stuff. It works the same way, even yeah. though on road is like more, more. Yeah, are you, yeah. Are you just time and gear it like differently? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, because I asked the uh, eight scale about Davy, I know you don't really you don't care about the driving, but I have to say this: Hobbywing eight scale speedos, they haven't impressed me. So maybe you gotta work in those stuff. What you think? <laughs> have, have you, have you, yeah, have you tried the new G three S? Well, I haven't tried the new ones, but I have friends who got them overheating. So you you have some work to do, dude. That's uh that's above my. Uh, I am stock racer. Nope. Get uh, on it. All, all I gotta say is, uh, are you ready? And uh, you know, we'll be. Uh, yeah, I, most people won't. Won't, won't won't understand that the are you I don't get it but, either. I just uh, know that Davy said get on it. So that's your but job. Davy understands it. He gets okay, it. but um I saw I saw the very low um stock speed or is that what you guys are running in stock? Or is that for on road only? Uh it's for all applications in stock. But what's the difference between that and the uh it is one? smaller like footprint. 
Okay, but same same uh, hardware. It's got some new settings in it. It's got a you can adjust the the drag brake like frequency, and you can adjust the throttle like curvature and the brake like curvature. And it also has a, a new like VEC setting and all that fun stuff. Why can't you run it in mod? Or do people run it in mod? Because it's a hundred amp HP control. Oh, so it can't pull so much power through it. Yeah, <laughs> what Davey okay. said. Kaboom. <laughs> okay now i have uh, all my questions i think we have to bring maddie on we need to do some um behind the scenes messaging so we can collaborate and bring you on when you guys release the new stuff because i want to geek out of electric i want to i need to g- take a course on uh, electrical motors i i wish i i took a course myself but i just this is all from going to the track talking to people and all that fun stuff you need to move to Finland. You know, university is free around here. <laughs> well, I, you know, fucking uh, good old like JQ is always like giving me crap, you know, about I haven't heard from him. He deleted his Instagram. And I never hear like anything from him. So he got a, you anyway, talk to him is on WhatsApp now. Really? I see. Yeah. Yeah. And even then he, I don't, he, he's, he's one of those. He's moved into a cottage. He's so forest. jaded. I interviewed, I have an interview yeah. with him. He's so jaded right now. He's jaded JQ. <laughs> The yeah, uh, okay. is that it, Max? It's not I one think hour and fifty eight minutes think, and thirty six yeah, seconds. Yeah, I think I think this is it. But I think me I'm and you, Keenan, you, I'll have some more questions. No, 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 no. Me and you, Keenan. I think we need to team up and get Davy to run more eight scale. I think so too. Because I think all these ten scale sissies say, "Oh, my <laughs> fingers get cold and whatever." You guys, you guys get a man up. Because, you know, that's where the real real deal is at. You know, you can't stick to just the uh, yeah, nose Davey. hair trimmers. Yeah, Davey. Sweet. Well, Davey, congratulations. Good luck in your next race. You, good job. Thank you. Thank you guys for your time. We appreciate we appreciate it uh, geeking out with you. Congratulations to all the winners and podium finish at the Desert Classic. And uh, you have talked to Davey Bada and Maddie G. Max. If I don't stop you, you will just non-stop questions. Non-stop questions. Gotta stop. I know. I know. Thank you, guys. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. Yep. You too. We'll see ya. Yeah. Thank you, Matty G. Thank you, David Bada, for you guys' time. You get your appreciated. Max, I hope you have fun going in science mode with Matty G and all that stuff. I think you are turning into a stock racing fan. I am. But I'm not. I'm not turning into. I want to run a seventeen point five. I'm turning into. We are actually developing these motors, in you know, like an efficiency way. You know, that's what I'm fan of. Because I think it would be for even the pro drivers would be much cooler if you had that. You know, thing. I I think like for H scale that like, I feel that's a thing. I think what makes e buggy a little lame is. You have too much power, just too much. And it, you just drive it like a madman and you can be fast. But for nitro, you have to, you know, balance your, um, balance your, um, mileage. You have to, have to understand how the, you know, motor works to get more power out of it. But you still have to make the power to the ground. I think that's what's cool about it to me. And I, I see. That same thing about stock. I, I 100% see it now. Absolutely. All right. Well, we're, we're making you a fan. Uh, with that yeah, said. But I, I have, okay. I have to, oh, I have to make. I There's have to always stop. a but. There's always a but. If you have a pink pinion on your car, okay? And if you fucking do this sissy shit that, oh, my car has to be this and I need to. Come on. Stop that bullshit, okay? Make your cars light, fine. Uh, fine tune your engines, cool. But don't be, don't be doing all the fucking gold nuts and. Why? But you, you were all about titanium nuts two weeks ago. Yeah, but I don't want them to be colored. I want them to be like titanium. I hate all this. Oh, I want to style my car into freaking. I this today I'm gonna style my car into blue. I'm gonna anodize all my parts to make it blue. That's. Fuck that. I fucking hate that. It's a race car. It doesn't need to look pretty. It needs to be fast. So now you don't like anodizing. Jesus, Max. You're getting more yeah. and more like JQ as you get older, complaining about everything. 
All right. Yeah. Uh, well, that's good because this is a great segue into our hot race uh, tires, hot topics, hot potato and hot and cold section. What do you buy? Hot race tires. Uh, Nicholas get looking forward to going over to DNC next week and see if he can get himself a victory. Uh, we want to thank Hot Race Tires for all their continued support of the No Name RC podcast. And your hot potato of the week is actually Spec Racing. So give us a little run on why Spec Racing is your hot topic of the weekend. Yeah, I, we talked about it a lot with Matty already uh, on this podcast, but I think. I mean, this is partly because of Davy winning the race. You're all geeking out on Davy. I am, but I, I, I just feel like everywhere in the world, like people are talking about it. In Finland, we have a big scene coming up of uh, spec racers. In Europe, at the US, there's so much spec racers. In touring, it's growing. Everybody's talking about it. You know, people are hiring uh, people to work there. And you know, all that's like, um, what was it? Was it R1 who released that, like Maddie said, the three, the three gear gearbox? And everyone was like, oh, this stock racers, blah, 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 blah. I feel like that has been recently a big, big topic. Everything is about spec, everything is about, but I but think it's so much money involved in it. So much. Yeah. Yeah. So much. And everybody, and it's, I mean, it's look look at it. Look at the Florida RC Championships this past weekend. Stock and you know seventy five thirty five fill up B mains. Yeah, mod don't even got a you know. So you said something that I've been saying for years. You said mod is the new stock and stock is the new mod. I've been saying that for years. So mod is actually yeah. more stock than stock is. Uh, yeah, should, yeah. Was, we should call it spec mod to be honest. Uh, but that's it. I think. I think the spec rate, I think the the challenge of being able to get a fast motor to beat some, because, you, okay, you need a faster motor to outpower that person mm -hmm. to do that jump. Mm -hmm. That's what makes a, an additional, you know, trying to squeeze every little ounce of power out of that car within a, within parameters is what appeals to some people. Is it a, mm -hmm. a beginner's class? No. But it's definitely a very booming class and i think you're going to start seeing it happening on it, like you said yeah pro stock races yeah you do you're going to yeah. start probably seeing that in europe as well now oh, does that, yeah yeah does that yeah. mean will, will we see so here's my question will we see spec race spec racing regionally in europe oh yeah 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 but it's, it's happening already uh, is it so let yeah me, Okay. In Finland, there was like, I think right now, the last local race we had uh, in the Helsinki area, mm -hmm. I'd say we had almost 50-50 mod and spec. Really? In, in off-road, yeah. In, in on-road, almost nobody's running mod these days. It's They barely really? fill an A main in touring. And then, yeah, I dude, like touring cars forever in Finland, it has been so that, you know, mod has been really small. And the more we've gone forward, the more uh, spec races we have, and less mod. But now it's catched off in in um, in ten scale as well. You know I'm who ain't worried you. about mo who ain't, ain't worried about spec classes? That's UK because the British GP two wheel drive, four wheel drive. That's it. Yeah, I don't know why, but the, the thing with the UK is they have always done things differently. You know, they, they always stick have... to the rules. Yeah, and they 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 are like. I think it's stupid to, you know, even talk about the British in this sense because they still have their houses are built in the fucking Middle Ages and they oh, have God. water coming on from two two places. They they are like so far behind on everything. Oh my gosh, they like you just dissed everybody in Britain. No, but they know it. They know it deep down. Obviously <laughs> that's a legacy and all that stuff. They, dude, they fucking wear their wigs in court. Like what the fuck? Like what's I mean, wrong? It's it's it, so something I saw today when I was writing, watching this that made me think, wow, that hasn't changed. But yeah, they are stickler for for rules in the UK, yeah. and yeah, and I don't. If there's one I place don't, I don't see stock becoming popular, it's there. Oh yeah, I don't think it's gonna happen in the UK, and that's fine. I I don't. 
I don't necessarily see that being like a thing in Asia. It's very different. They run very different stock rules than we run here in Europe, and Americans run very different stock rules than we run here. It's it's normal. It happens, you know. And I I'm not I'm not against that, but I think for the professional level, I'm seeing a little bit of an issue coming up in the future where some drivers do don't even want to move to modified uh, at all. Well, there's our hot and cold statement. Spec racers who have moved to mod. Yeah. Not, so it's a, it's a difference in the USA, right? And then Europe. So Europe, there is not that much spec racing. So these guys are already yeah. running mod. Yeah. They're already just like getting into this A finals. When I, I don't think you fully understand the amount of money that's involved in stock racing in, in the USA. I, I think, I think I do. I, think I, I don't do. think you do. I don't think you do. I do not think you do. Um, and that's what it comes down to. It's so much money from companies being put into stock racing. That's why we have modified racing. You know, modified racing wouldn't exist if we without stock making money for it. So, um, and racers they, and they make money. Like you make, you can make money doing stock racing. You don't have to. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Like all these motor gurus, like Stacked RC, he's a good. Mm-hmm. He has no like he's one of our sponsors. He offers, you know, uh, he does his motors and all that stuff where he goes through them and does the same type of stuff as uh, Matty G does or whatnot. Guys, Jeff Stacks, one of the best stock stock racers out there in the world, like one of the best. No, and and that's what he like because the comp the amount of competition there is also great too, right? Mm-hmm. And you got all these like. All these stock drivers together, they go at it. So you have those, those, those two fifties going at it, right? Mm-hmm. And there's going to be some guys, like what's his name, that Ecuadorian guy who never moved out of 250 class, Davalos. Yeah, yeah. Martin Davalos, like, stayed in 250s forever. I, I just think there's going to be guys like that in, in there. And, mm-hmm. and as such, and I think that transition's hard, right? That's why we don't see many people. Look, Brandon Schimmel went, went, I went a year before... Davey Bada and Brandon Shim was just, you know, he made the move to from stock to mod, dominated, decimated guys in, in stock, mm-hmm. but has not been able to uh, do the same in mod. Yeah. So some guys will get it and some guys will drop back down to, to stock because that's what they know. That's where they are somebody and that's where the money is. Yeah. But I, my, because I'm always excited for the high end development, and I see, I see it absolutely ridiculous that we have companies hiring people to develop a product strictly for customers, not for the top drivers they want to show. They don't like, like Maddie said doesn't really care like he doesn't focus on the modified setup he cares about only the stock that's that's what he's there to do and i think that's wild that companies put more money into racing that's not the highest level that would be like red bull you know right but you gotta understand is that there are a genre of god there is a group of guys that are at that highest level in that particular class but it's 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 like you like it's like Formula One putting all their focus into F2, right? Yeah. But yeah. that's what I'm trying to tell you. That's because there's so much money involved on the whole grand scheme of things. That's why. The money well, exactly. for modified racing is coming, in my opinion, is coming from the stock racing. I, I, I agree with that. But we, like I said before, we already have in the effort rules for pan cars, 6.5 blinky, you know, that's modified. I don't see it too far fetched for modified to become like 10.5 blinky, you know, or whatever it is, the final rules that we'll have. But I think, cause like I've said this many, many times in nitro, we have 0.25 C, 0.21 CC. That's the, that's the, that's the limit. You know, you have that amount of cubic centimeters and you can, you can use in electric. We don't have that. An electric, we all know, produces more power. So no, how come the rules apply? Exactly. I think we are getting to a point where 
the modified racing is going like even when we look at those mains from Desert Classic, that was carnage. These guys were crashing over every other lap. You know, that's not that doesn't look very professional. Why would you know a car manufacturer want that to be the case that the guys just run really fast and then crash all the time? I think we are going to it's not gonna happen now, it's not gonna happen probably in the next few years either. But I think there will be a point where people start considering what if we should have, you know, layers of mod. Like it's not every class is going to be effectively spec, but it's going to be layers. It's going to be the 17.5, then you have the 10.5, and then you maybe even have the 21. Do you want more classes? I don't necessarily need more classes, but I think this is the chance to make it happen because we're. It's going to be mandatory. It's some people are not going to be able to run the same. Maybe I mean, maybe 17.5 will become the top class at some point. But we have seen classes die out before. It's not a thing that, you know, because imagine the situation that in America, we have 90% of drivers running stock or spec. Then that goes on for 10 years. How many of those drivers will really be good at the world championships? We have 10 guys in America who run mod. That's just going to be like all the guys who go to the worlds. I, I, don't, I don't think that's going to be, you know, productive in long term. So you, you, you want a stock worlds, that's what you're saying? I don't want stock, stock worlds. World. I, want, I want the modified to be adjusted to the time. Because that's what happened with many classes, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's just what's what's going to happen. And I think that's going to be there with e-buggy too. I, it's the, the amount of power you have. It's just crazy. It's not. I am very. It, yeah, go ahead. The whole e-buggy running whatever you want, power-wise, battery-wise, all that type of stuff. I am very interested to see. Uh, so, obviously, I'm going to the uh, World Cup here shortly i'm very interested to see what type of rules they're going to be applying to this because at some point there's going to have to be rules right some guys were like well I, i'm coming with my 10,000 mah battery or you know uh, there's going to have to be weight limits that's going to have to be met like all this type of stuff that uh that people i mean there are met. there are very basic rules but there are no rules whatsoever to you know how much power you can have mm -hmm. like that obviously you have you know, measurement of the engine or motor. You have the, you know, rotor size. You have the the engine, what you call it, the engine block size. Those are all limited, you know. But Engines to run on gas, by the way. Motor, uh, motor but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Motor, motor, yeah, the motor block uh, limit. I don't know what the future holds. I don't know what the future holds for e buggy or spec. All I know is that right now, in America, stock racing is king. Yeah, and I think I That's think it. it's gonna keep growing, and it has been spoken of for so long. And it was this French touring car driver who talked about. It. I think it was actually Yasmin Loic who talked about it, because in France they didn't. Have, I don't know what the situation now, but at least at that point they just didn't have modified drivers to run their national. Nobody really? wanted to run modified. Yeah, there was two entries. Modified. <laughs> yeah, because the, the the prestige is now in stock, right? Yeah, and I think I think if that happens to you think that's gonna happen to offer it? Maybe, who knows? I mean I, it could be that it just stays the way it is as a pure of legacy, like just because people think modified is the thing that's gonna keep it. But it's gonna be hard to see if manufacturers put all of their money in the stock if uh, the people working in the industry put all of their. Now, here's a big difference. Stock. Here's a big difference. The people that are running stock pay, <laughs> right? The average person that's out there running yeah. stock pays. For sure, yeah, yeah. But if if you sell, let's see, your hobby wing, you sell hundred modified motors to two thousand stock motors. Why would you pay some guy to run mod when you can have guy run stock? If that's what you're looking for, there you go. Well, why, yeah, yeah. From from strictly thinking from a business perspective, because why would still, you do that? Yeah, because either way, those those same mod guys that you pay are probably gonna, if you drop them down to stock, they'll win anyway. Sure, but why would it, why wouldn't uh, Hobbywing say to Spencer Rivkin, "Hey, you run stock and mod. 
Because I think the majority of the world mod is still for the chassis manufacturer, sure. But I'm talking about the elect- yeah, yeah. But right. I'm from for the chassis manufacturer, of course, associated ones in run mod because that's the number one class. But for hobby wing, as as uh, Matthew Gonzalez said on the podcast, they have not had a big you know presence in stock. They haven't marketed the stock. Now they have specifically went out and mm-hmm. gotten stock drivers on their team. Um, and Maddie G and, to focus on stock. Yeah, exactly. And Spencer Ripken has been running for Hobby Wing for I don't know how long, two, three years now. If they sell, like I said, 100 mod motors for 2,000 spec motors, like at what point do you think, hey, is this a grand a month we pay to Ripken or whatever the amount they actually pay to Ripken? Is this worth it? Or should we instead hire like or put these guys to travel budget who run the spec because who is going to give a shit about uh, I see what you mean anyway. I see what you mean yeah. we, 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 we will, maybe we'll find out one day yeah maybe yeah. we will find out all right man that's actually what do you guys think do you think that uh we'll see stock become the main class coming into the future and mod completely dying let us know in the comments all right Max races Coming up, obviously, we have DNC, the big shebang. Uh, we're going to do a, a preview of that next week. Started to see, I saw that David was flying over there. So we're starting to see people migrating over to that great migration over to SoCal. And I'm sitting there and I'm just like, oh man, I wish I was going now. <laughs> but uh, oh, good. I'll be watching the, I'll be in the States. I'll be watching the action when I can. Uh, but we'll talk more about that as well. We have, I'll be at the Florida RC Championships, March 22nd to 23rd at Callahan. Callahan RC Raceway in Florida, International Buggy Challenge, March 28th to 31st. See you guys there. Followed by the E-Buggy World Cup that following weekend, as well as Psycho Nitro Blast, which is going to be stacked. We have the Top Nut Series Round 1, uh, April 6th, Thunder Alley in Beaumont, California. We have the Off-Road Dirt Nationals coming up April 17th to the 21st at Beach RC. We have Wallace Race, that Ryan Mayfield Nitro RC Supercross Championship April 20th to 21st. North Georgia Shootout, which I'll be at April 25th to 28th. Florida RC Championships, at uh, 10 Scale Championships at Beach Line in April. Asian Buggy Championships in April 18th to 31st. Man, I want to go to the Philippines. And then, of course, we have Silver State and, um, excuse me, I apologize. Uh, we have Silver State coming up. We have the Nationals coming up. We have Euro. So lots of racing left to go. And don't forget, we have one small race called the uh, called the uh, World Championships. That's helping, happening in September. We also have the warm-ups yeah. coming in in April. Uh, check out their website and uh, find all the information you need to know about Brazil and how to get there and go to the worlds in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Max, anything to add before we close out? I think we've been going for quite a long. We haven't done a four-hour podcast in quite some weeks. Yeah, I think I think we're good. We had some good things to talk about. Yeah. yeah. Thank you to Davey Bada and Maddie G for your time. We greatly appreciate that. Thank you, Max, for your time. Thank you all out there, the NNRC squad from around the world. Thank you for all the support. If you guys are going racing this weekend, be safe, have fun. Thank you to the patrons and YouTube members of the NNRC. We greatly appreciate your support. And also, we can't do this without these awesome companies that support us. Remember, showing these companies some love, shows the podcast some love. We have links, affiliate links, coupon codes, written links, all that stuff. Links, 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 links in the written description of this podcast. Invisible Speed, High Tech RC, Corsa Tech USA, Side One of Fuel, Mayako, Beach RC, Techno RC, Clinic RC, Stacked RC. Racecraft USA, RC Box Club, Call RC, Elite RC Productions, Florida RC Championships, RC Body Armor, SJ Racing Builds, House of RC, RCGP, Shuttle to Our Drivers, Dave Runafuck, Robert Maddie, Alexander Hagrack, Maddie G, Pekka and Yuna, and of course Mason Fuller. I'm, I'm I'm really looking forward to DNC, but we'll we'll talk more about that. Maybe we'll get K and one to talk about it next week. We'll see how it goes. With that said, everybody enjoy your weekend. Good luck to everybody at the British GP. Good luck to everybody at the Femca race. And wherever you're racing this weekend, have fun. Good time. Max, thank you for your time. Enjoy your weekend off. I will see you next week where we geek out some more on RC. And enjoy your time off, good buddy. I will. I will. 
With that said, Nitro's the glory. E-buggy pays the bills. Max and Lefty, we're out. Thank you, everybody. 